eventually Jesus will come The saints are many He'll be taking us home Oh, the joy to behold The wonder A place prepared By Jesus the firstborn And we'll finally get To sing hallelujah Life in the red To God I'll make up Oh, the joy to behold The wonder A place prepared By Jesus the firstborn Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're happy to be in God's presence, just wave those hands together to Jesus. Let me see you wave your hands to Jesus. Yes, it's another wonderful time today. God has blessed us with a wonderful opportunity again in His presence. And I want us to begin to appreciate God and say, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. Opportunity to be at your presence opportunity to be blessed of you. Come on, give him praise and give him honor. Give him thanks. Give him adoration. Wow, what a mighty God we serve. What a glorious God. What a mighty King. He is God. He changed not. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. Father, we give you praise. Lord Jesus, we exalt you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is another singles in the house with Mommy Gloria. It's a, it has been a wonderful time since the maiden edition. And here we are again today to be blessed. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Father, we exalt you. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth where you are and exalt this God. Exalt the name of our Lord. Worship him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. The Lord has been affording to us his agenda for us in this end time. Yo, let's appreciate him, that he found us worthy, that he found us worthy. Father, we give you praise. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks. Lord Jesus, we give you adoration. We exalt you. Father, we say thank you. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know your expectation today, but if you have an expectation, can you tell God, this is my expectation today? In the name of Jesus, I'm expecting to be blessed. I want to have an encounter with you. I want to have an encounter with you. I'm not just here to just watch and see things happen in many, many but other people's life. I want you to visit me in the name of Jesus. If that is your prayer, open your mouth and pray. The Lord will visit you. He will visit you. He will visit you. In the mighty name of Jesus, he has called us to his banquet hall. He has called us into his, into his table to come and feast with him. He's a feast that he has called us unto. Lord, we worship you. We say, Lord, I'm here with an expectation that I will be fed tonight. In the name of Jesus, I'll be fed tonight. Can you pray that the Lord will prepare your heart, that your spirit of God will cleanse your heart, the blood of Jesus will cleanse your heart to accept the engrafted world that is able to save you. In the name of Jesus, that tonight I will ex I will accept you, Lord. Your word will enter my heart. In the name of Jesus, Lord, cleanse me, purify my, prepare my heart for an encounter tonight. In the name of Jesus, what is it that is clogging your heart? What is it that is on your heart already? Like a body, something that can deter you from entering into his presence. Drop those things and say, Lord, I'm here to be cleansed. I'm here to be purified. I'm here to be healed. I'm here to be transformed. I'm here to be blessed. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is my moment. I'm here, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm here in your presence. I'm here to meet with you. I have come to meet with you. I have come to meet with you. You said you have not asked the house of Jacob to seek in vain. I am here to meet you. I'm here to seek you. Father, I am here. Lord, meet me in the name of Jesus. Meet me, O oh God. Let your presence take over my life. Let your presence be with me where I am. In the name of Jesus, can you begin to pray that the presence of God with the um, envelope every one of us where we are, where we are joining from, from different parts of the world, that the presence of God will envelope us in the name of Jesus, that we shall experience in his presence anywhere we are joining from. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, ask that the presence of God will be real to you today. In the name of Jesus, ask, oh God, even as your expectation has been lifted up to him, that you will come out of this meeting blessed, not just blessed, transformed, not just transformed, healed and delivered, clarity coming to you. In the name of Jesus, that you want to any confusion in your heart, ask the Lord to clear all confusions today, that every part of this meeting will be a blessing to you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we hand over this meeting to you, Lord. We, oh Lord Jesus, do what only you can do. That which you have promised us. You have promised us healing. You have promised us transformation. You have promised us deliverance. You have promised us salvation, restoration, wiping of tears, cleansing. Father, we say we receive all. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we receive all. In the name of Jesus, I want you to begin to now pray for every segment that it will be a blessing to you. Lord, that I will be blessed. In the name of Jesus, and nothing will be a waste. There's no wasting in the presence of God. Everything that the Lord does is a big deal. It's something important that we will not miss out on God. In the name of Jesus, and I want you to pray for our ministers today. Pray for our mommy. Pray for all the music ministers. Pray for all our guest ministers. That the power of God will come upon them afresh, mightily. They will deliver the word of God to us from the throne of heaven. In the name of Jesus, that our lives will be totally transformed. Father, we give you praise. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give all the glory. We give all the honor. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you believe God is going to do you good tonight, shout hallelujah. And then jam those hands together for Jesus. Our God is good. Good, hallelujah, amen and amen. I'm happy to welcome us into this edition, this special edition of Singles in the House with Mommy Gloria. We thank the Lord for this great vision, and we thank the Lord for our mommy and the Lord for this vision at this time. There have been mighty testimonies since the beginning, and I know that today is not going to be an exception. It, it can never be an exception, because the Bible talks about the glory of the latter. I say it's greater than that of the former. So if you are here for the very first time, I welcome you. If you are here, if you have been here before, I welcome you. I welcome everyone in the name of Jesus. And I want you to know that everything we do here, I want you to be to participate fully. I don't want you to listen passively. You may miss some things. I want you to be involved in what we are doing because the Lord is set to bless us. Hallelujah. Welcome you in the name of Jesus. Our mommy is already in the house. Welcome, my mommy. God bless you, ma. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. So we start away with uh, while well, we welcome our Zion worshipers. Zion worshipers, are you ready? If you're ready, unmute yourself and let's have a worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, we can hear you. God bless you. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Zion singers, God bless you. That's awesome. And I believe you dance to the Lord. Everyone join us. I believe you You worship God. You dance to the Lord. I don't know about you, but at least you can see the video. You see the excitement that we have in this space. We are just so excited about what the Lord is already doing, even from the prison worship. God bless Zion singers. God bless you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will constantly renew your strength and bless you more, more unction. In the name of Jesus, more music, more songs, more inspiration. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. By the grace of God, we are moving on, and we will be going to a moment of intercession, a moment of prayers. And um, I want to beseech you that you should not be a, a, a spectator in this program. I want you to be a participant. And that is that means everything we are doing here, you are Part of it. So when we are singing, sing. Because when the, when the, when the angels of the Lord is visiting too, he will visit you where you are. So when we are singing, sing. When we are praying, pray. And when we are listening to the word, listen with rapt attention. Because that is when the words will be dropping and the miracles will be dropping more and more and more and more. So don't just, don't just watch and be doing something else. Be part of it. And I tell you, you will give testimonies. In the name of Jesus. So welcome our beloved sister, Jesukwe Lumi Ugumola for the intercession. Do you unmute yourself, man? Yeah, praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Uh, I really want to thank mommy for giving me this privilege and I want to thank God for giving me this privilege to serve in this capacity. Um, it's the time of prayer and I believe each and every one of us is um, ready to pray to the most high God. Uh, before we go into our prayer for today, I want us to just um, bless God and appreciate the name of the living God for keeping us to see a day like this the last Sunday in the month of April. I want us to appreciate God for making us be in his presence, for keeping us here, for making us have the reason to be here in his presence. Let's appreciate the name of God. It is, it is, it is, the, it is a big privilege that we are here today. It is a big privilege that we are in the presence of God today. It is a good thing. It is a thing that we are meant to rejoice about, that we are in God's presence. Some people think the best way they can enjoy their singlehood is to be in the hotel. Some people feel the best way they can enjoy their singlehood is to be at a club. But here we are in the presence of God. We've remembered our creator in the days of our youth. We didn't forget him. Let's appreciate the name of God. Let's thank him because it is by his grace that we are here. It's not because we can pray. It's not because we can fast, but it is God's goodness that has kept us to see a day like this. God's goodness that has kept us to be in his presence this evening. Let's appreciate the name of the Lord Most High. Let's give him all the praise. Let's adore his holy name. Let's say thank you to him. Let's say thank you to him. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Let's, appreciate him. Let's give him all glory. Let's give him all honor. It is a privilege that we are here today. It is a privilege that we are here this moment. Let's give God the glory. Let's give God the glory. Let's give God the glory. Let's say thank you, Jesus. Let's say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, most high God. Thank you, a share of days. Thank you, I am that I am that I'm here today in your presence. It is what rejoicing about. It is what thanking you about. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. Father, I say thank you for keeping me in your presence this moment. Father, Lord, I say thank you for making me see that it is best for me to remember you in the days of my youth. Let's appreciate God. We will not experience the youth days twice. This is the one time we are going to experience that, that being, being a youth. Let's appreciate it. Let's appreciate God because we are using our youthful strength to serve him. Let's say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we say thank you father we say thank you father we say thank you in jesus mighty name i've prayed now um i've only been led to lead us in just one prayer point just one prayer point and um i'll be reading from the book of Ruth, chapter one is a story that we all know very well i will start from verse one it says in the days when the judges ruled there was famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his, of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Chilon. And they were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech died, the husband of Naomi, and she was left with her two sons. These two Moabite wives, the name of one was Opa and the name of the other Ruth. They lived about 10 years and both Marlon and Chilon died so that the woman was bereft of her two sons and husband. I believe every one of us know this story very well. Now, I want us to understand something that uh, in this end time, God has a lot of things in store for us, for, for we singles. He has a lot of things in store for us, for we youth. But how do we get to live out all these things that God has prepared for us? How do we get to live out all these things that God has in store for us? What God has made me understand, yes, is by walking according to the guidance of God. Look at the life of Elimelech here. He left the land of Bethlehem to Moab without being guided by God. And what eventually ended his life, it was destruction. He died, and even his two sons died. So God is, this is what God is leading, is putting in our hearts this day is that in everything we do, in every of our endeavors, we are to seek God. We are to seek the guidance of God. So therefore, I want us to pray everywhere we are that God, you will help me that my life will not be desolate of your guidance. Father, you will help me that my life will not be desolate of your guidance. If we are to 
our mothers and fathers in faith what has helped them up to this point. It is because they listened to the guidance of God. They didn't start when they were married. They started when they were singles. So I want us to pray anywhere we are, everywhere we are, that God, my life will not be desolate of your guidance. I won't build my life based on my own initiative. I won't build on my, my life based on working on according to my own wisdom. Elimelech walked according to his own wisdom and he lost his life. Elimelech walked according to his own wisdom and he wondered the way anyone who will not follow the guidance of God will just keep wondering about the hurt. We'll just keep wondering about the world and what will be the difference between we Christians and those that are in the world is the guidance of the Holy Spirit is by following the guidance of the Holy Spirit. How can we fit in into the end time agenda of God for our lives? Is by walking according to the guidance of God. I want us to pray to God our Father, my life will not be desolate of your guidance. In every I do every step I take, Lord. I will follow your guidance. I will follow your guidance. Not following the guidance of God is like losing the key to our to our, to our exploits in life. Not following the guidance of God is like is like losing the key that will make us advance in life. God has created the world, He has created the earth, He knows the end from the beginning, He knows the way we are meant to work, He knows what we are meant to do. So, how do we expect that we are going to progress in this life if we refuse the guide Himself? Let's pray to God. That Father, my life will not be desolate of your guidance. Lord, you will help me to always walk according to your will. You will help me to walk, always walk according to your guide. You will help me, Lord, that I will always walk according to your guide. I will walk according to my own wisdom. The book of First Corinthians makes us understand that even the wisdom of men is, 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 is foolish. Is even, the, even the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. So why are we following our own initiative? Why are we following our own wisdom? Let's pray to God, the Father, you will help me that I will follow your guide all the days of my life. Lord, you will help me to follow your guide all the days of my life. Lord, you will help me to follow your guide all the days of my life. A life that is a life that is not that is not um, built on the guidance of God will eventually be rendered useless. The life that is not working according to the will of God will have nothing to show forth in life. We want to excel in our careers. We want to excel in our marriage. We want to excel in our academics. We want to excel in our maritals. We need the guidance of God. Let us pray to God, our Father. My life will not be desolate of your guidance. You will help me to walk according to your guide. You will help me to walk according to your guide. Oh Lord, help me that I will not, I will not, I will not turn deaf ears to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Father, you will help me that I will not turn deaf ears to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me in all my endeavors. Help me, Lord, to seek you. The book of um, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 14 says, it said, if my people who are called by my name will pray and seek my face, seek the face of the Lord, Oh, Father, you will help me that all the days of my life, I will seek your face for your guidance. All the days of my life, Lord, Father, you will help me to seek you for guidance. Father, you will help me to seek you for guidance. Once we are being guided by God, our exploit is certain. Once we are being guided by God, once we are working according to the will of God, our fulfillment is certain. Let's pray to God, and God, you will help me to follow your guide, that I will be on track with you, that I will be on track with you, that I will be on track with you. I want to believe we are praying everywhere we are. I want to believe we are praying this prayer seriously because once we lose the guidance of God is like we have lost everything. Oh Father help me that I will walk according to your guide. I will walk according to your guide. I will walk according to your guide. And lastly how can we walk according to God's guidance is to seek the Lord in the place of prayer. Is to seek the Lord in eating the word of God. It is to seek the Lord by listening to godly content. Let's pray to God, our Father. You will help me to seek you in the place of prayer, Lord. Help me, Father, to seek you in reading and studying your word. Father, help me not to seek you in listening to things that will benefit my life, in listening to things that will help me to fulfill destiny. Oh, Lord, help me that I will not be a wanderer. I will just come to this end and go back like that. I will just come to this end and just do whatever I want and go back like that. Help me, Father, to fulfill destiny. Help me, Father, to seek you now that I'm a youth. Help me, Lord, to seek you with all my strength. Help me, Father, to seek you in the place of prayer. Help me, Lord, to travel and advance in the place of prayer. Help me, Father, to study more of your word, oh Lord. Father, help me. Lord, help me. I want to believe we are praying this prayer. I want to believe we are praying this prayer. These are the things that can help us in this adulterous and purpose world. The world is so confused that if we don't have God, if we don't listen to God, there is no way we can live our lives correctly. It is only God that can help us to live a correct life in this purpose 
for that. Oh, let's pray to God. Oh, Father, you help me to seek you all the days of my life. That I will fit into your end time agenda. That I think you have for me. That I will be able to fit into it. Father, help me to seek you all the days of my life. Help me, Father, to follow your guide. Help me, Father, to follow your guidance. Help me, Father, that my life will not be desolate of your guidance. I do not want to waste away. I do not want to waste my time. I do not want to be a wanderer. But Father, you will help me to follow you all the days of my life. You will help me to seek you all the days of my life. I want to believe you are praying. I want to believe you are praying. I want to believe you are praying in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the rock of ages, we thank you for this privilege you've given to us to pray again this evening. We give you all glory. We say your name be highly exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, our Heavenly Father, we pray that even as we've said this into your ears, O oh Lord, our life will not be desolate of your guidance in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The grace we need, O oh Lord, to according to your will to follow your guide we pray that lord you will grant unto us in the mighty name of jesus the grace we need to seek you lord now that we are used all the days of our lives we pray that lord you will grant unto us in the mighty name of jesus we put the rest of the program into your hands we ask that lord you take preeminent control in the mighty name of jesus thank you eternal rock of ages for you've answered our prayers in jesus mighty name have i prayed amen, amen. thank you ma amen. thank you very much sir God bless you, my beloved sister. God bless you in the name of Jesus. That's our beloved sister, Jesus Pelumi Ogumola. The Lord renew your strength. And that was a powerful intercession, receiving God's wisdom for our lives. And I believe that uh, we all pray that prayer. And once you pray that prayer, I tell you there are answers here in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Amen and amen. Um, I want to say that uh, it, this, is, this is awesome. What the Lord is doing in our midst is awesome. By God's grace, this is the fourth edition of Singles in the House in Mommy Gloria, and it has been wonderful. And I know that shortly we'll be calling for testimonies, testimonies. So if you have testimonies, you were in the first, um, the first uh, edition, or you were in the second edition, or you were in the third edition, and God has done something great in your life, you want to share. So we want you to really just signify Immediately after, well, we will still call you, but just signify whatever the Lord has done. You want to share the miracles you have seen. We want to hear your testimonies. We want these testimonies is for others to be encouraged. It's for them to know that God is doing wonders in our midst. So please don't shy away. Don't feel shy. Share what the Lord has done. And I tell you, your testimonies will abound more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. The time has come to welcome our mommy for the our welcome address. Our mommy, the Lord has... Thank you so much, Ma, for this vision. I want to say thank you again for all that you do for this vision. It has been wonderful. And our lives have been transformed over and over again. And Mommy will be telling us about this vision. You are asking what the singles in the house, you know, what does it stand for? What does it? Mommy will tell us the vision, everything, so that you can prepare yourself to enjoy every bit of it. I want us to with clapping ovation. If you're ready, this is our mommy. This is our mommy that has called us. So if you are not clapping, I will not spotlight. If you are not clapping, I will not let you know. Oh, yeah. Clap to Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, well, yeah, let's see. Clap, clap. Let me see the clap. Hallelujah. If you are not on video, clap. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you. Mommy, you are welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Let somebody shout yes, hallelujah. Wave your hand to Jesus wherever you are. I want you to appreciate the Lord. He is good. He is good. Wave your hand to him. He's our father. He's our redeemer. He's been so good to us since the beginning of this program. The Lord has been blessing us. There has been testimonies. I'm telling you, yeah. God answers prayers. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, God has been doing wonderful things in our life. Mm. I have living testimony. I have testimony. Oh, I, 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 I see people with, with serious testimonies as a result of what God has been doing in this program. God has been blessing us. He's been so faithful. Mm. And I know that today, God is already here to bless you. Yes, so count yourself privileged to be here mm. today. Count yourself privileged to receive your own portion. And I believe you will never remain the same in Jesus' name. So we are talking about the vision. You know, God gave the vision. 
that singles, brothers and sisters should come together, you know, to, to hear his voice. The purpose of God is agenda for this end time. End time. God's agenda for this end time. And when we're talking about agenda, you know, it's like plan where you have some things you want to do, like in a meeting, but let's say plan, the plan of God, the purpose of God is desire for your life. Is desire for the singles. And right from the beginning of this program, you know, God has been talking to us. Ministers have been coming, opening our eyes to series of things. God asks for our life, beautiful things. I remember the verse which says the thought of God for you, singles in the house. A man of God even said that the only person God has agenda for from the beginning of the world are the singles. You remember that message from Pastor Leke Adeboye when he said that God has the only person that God said, even when God was thinking about the plan he has for people, he has planned for the singles. He said it was the singles that God really focused on to show you how important you are in God's agenda. Because everything starts from here. Your life, your future starts from now. There are times when you are still very young, like a toddler, but you are growing now. You know what to do, what not to do. You know good from evil. You can decide on your own. So singles in the house, you are so special to God because you are the future. Your parents may have beautiful plan for you, but I'm telling you, the plan of God is the best for your life. Because it's when you know the agenda of God, when you know the plan of God, things he has proposed in his heart, what, I mean, stages by stages of your life, God, when you know this, you will not be confused in life. You'll be focused. Your life will be beautiful. You'll not be deceived by the devil. So that is the reason why we have this program for you to know where you are going from now, for you to be able to plan your life from now, from now at this stage. If you enter into marriage without knowing the purpose of God for your life, you make a mess of it. If you enter, if you, are, if you just grow like this without knowing the mind of God, you will, you, the pros, to prosper will be difficult. But God wants you to prosper. He wants to bless your life. He wants to have your whole husband. He wants to have your whole wife. Your mother can't do this for you. They, they are human being. Your father cannot do it because they are human being. They are like, they too, they are children in the hand of God. That is why at this moment, the Bible says, know your God by in the time of your youth. When you can say this is what, when you have all strength, when you have everything you need to move, to pursue, to fulfill the purpose of God. So this time must not be wasted. Many people have wasted this time and they are still gathering their life together. But I'm telling you, you can get it now. That is why God raised this program, to speak into your life, to show you what God wants to do in your life, to live, you know, to live from, from grace to grace, fulfilling the purpose of God, so that you will not be deceived by the devil, so that you will not be, your life will not be wasted because you are God's purpose, I mean, you are God's agenda for the future. You are God's, you are God's hope for the future. God is looking onto you to use you for his glory. That is the reason for this program. So, and I want you to please focus. Don't be distracted like our brother said the other time. Don't say we are, we are, we are like nobody can see me here. No, God is here with you. God is here. And I want you to please, whatever might be your, your problem or whatever you have been passing through, this is the time to open up to God because he wants to do you good. Anything that will hinder you from becoming what God wants to be, God will deal with that thing. When you are focused, when you are following everything, when we are supposed to pray, pray sincerely. We are supposed to worship God. Be focused and see before God. We are we are before God right now. We are like in a big hall because our Father holds the whole world. So don't say they don't see me now. No, please use this time and receive your blessing. Use this time very well in God's presence. So be focused. Anything we are doing, let your heart be there. When the ministers of God 
he is already in the house to bless us when he's ministering to us focus anyone who's talking maybe you're asking question let your heart be there because the angels of god are mixing with us in this program and the blessing of god will locate you wherever you are in the mighty name of jesus christ so i want you to pray this prayer begin to appreciate god wherever you are right now begin to worship god say lord i thank you for the it's a privilege that God is raising something like this to bless you, to bless me. So wave that arm to Jesus wherever you are. Appreciate him. Because if you don't praise him, you know, it is, it is, it is the praises. The Bible says God, God dwell in the midst of his people, in the praises of his people, in, in inhabited the praise of his people. So open your mouth and begin to say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you because today you will bless me. Because I will not remain the same today. Because you will locate me wherever I am right now. Because your presence is with us right now. Wave that hand to Jesus. Begin to appreciate him. If you can pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit. Begin to worship the ancient of days. I think the choir can join us. Just be singing unto the Lord. Worship God. Praise him. Say, Lord, we bless your name. Makuriali masanda yabale mostobo. Mali mosen terebo shikalamuda. Father, we bless your name. We give you praise. You are greater than the greatest. You are our God. Oh, my limo Sende. Father, we thank you. Because you are here with us. You are in the house to touch our life. You are in this place to reach unto every one of us. You are going to bless every one of us. Your children are gathering together to receive, to receive strength, to receive light, to receive direction in the mighty name of Jesus. Whoever have missed this one way or the other, you are correcting life in this program. You are bringing souls to the kingdom in this program. There shall be healing in this place. Lord, we glorify your name. We exalt, we begin to praise him. Sing unto the Lord. Just sing any song that comes to your heart to appreciate the King of glory. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, we bless your name. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you honor. Appreciate him. This is the fourth one. You know, this same year, it has been every month, and God has been coming down to meet with us. So praise him. Sing praises unto him. Say, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. You deserve the glory. Hallelujah. And the honor. As we give thanks in worship. As you pray, bless your holy name. You are great. Oh. The miracle so great, there is no mm, one in his life, like no one like our Lord. There is no one like Jesus, for you are grace. You do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like Thank you. Father, we declare that we love, love you. We declare everlasting love for you. Father, we appreciate you. Oh Lord, we give you glory. Malibo Shrebo Zendiri Alima Sanda. Makuri Alima Sonto. Malibo Zendiri Kalamashi. Malibo Zendiri Boye. Makari Alibo Sonto. Malibo Zendiri Kalamanda. Makuri Alibo Zendiri. We give you praise. Glory. We thank you, Jesus, for great things you are doing. Thank you for saving souls. Thank you for delivering people. Thank you for wonders you are going to do 
Oh, hallelujah. We welcome you to our mission. We give you praise. We say you are here. You are here to do wonders. You are here to bless us. You are here to direct us, to direct us right, to open our eyes. The revelation of your mind. You are here to talk to children. You are here to set people free from any captive of the devil. You are here to deliver. You are here to save souls because these are your the future. The future. The, 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 the people of the, that, that you are looking up to to do great and wonderful things for the kingdom. Therefore, we believe that you are setting them right. You are working in their life to fulfill your purpose. We thank you, O oh Lord, because today you are going to do the same. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. To you alone be all the glory. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. God bless you. That is all about the vision. It's to reach into your life. It's to bless your life. It's for you to be revived. I think yes. because of that, you need to clap for Jesus for this wonderful messages, ministries God has given unto us. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. If you are clapping, clap for Jesus. Thank you so much, mommy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, mother. The Lord bless you. The Lord renew your strength. Thank you for eating to God's call. Thank you so much, ma. Thank you. God bless you, Ma. I want to tell us quickly, brief, about what the Lord has been doing in our midst. But in the first edition, we're privileged to have our, uh, their pastor, Pastor Femi Lazarus, and it was an awesome time. And then the second edition was, wow, that was when we had uh, our pastor, Pastor Daria Deboye. It was awesome. How many of you were around that time? Please put on your video and wave your hands if you're around there. Let me see. Okay, and then last month we have our, our pastor, Pastor Daniel Olawande, and it was fire. How many of you remember? Hallelujah. Is she, is she, part of the thing he said is that God's agenda for the single is what? It's fire. That's it. It's just a fire. So, and he explained the fire. And I believe a lot of us caught the fire. Hallelujah. So, we have seen God. I wonders all since the beginning. It has always been awesome, always greater and greater. And today is not going to be an exception. We already have our guest minister in the house. Our beloved pastor is also around. Pastor Tokwe Awufi is already in the house. Come on, just clap your hands and appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yes, I know he's in the house. His video is not on now, so I, won't, uh, I can't spot lighting. But when the time comes, yeah, he, he will be joining us. He's, he, he, this is another vessel of God that God has, uh, has prepared for us. And I tell you, get ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Before we continue, we'll be taking testimonies now. So if you have testimonies, I want to signify, just use the reaction button on the, on the, on the tab there and raise your hand and raise your hand. Or if you want to type it in the, in the chat box, you can also type it in the chat box so that we can see. We can also read your testimonies if you have testimonies. Hallelujah. We know we have testimony. So I want to begin to share it. So raise your hand. So while we're waiting for you to raise your hand, don't be shy. If you have been there, okay. If you have been there before, let me see. Let me just wave your hand. Let me see. Wave your hand. You put on your video and wave your hand. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Good. Hallelujah. So we have people that have testimony. So someone's already raising their hand. Please raise their hand. Press it again. It's like you double pressed it. Okay, let's see it. Hallelujah. And the one who said that this program is organized by the, the Lord's hand maiden and the overcomers. These two, the Lord's hand maiden is the in the is the female wing, and the overcomers is the male wing. They are all both of them are they are twin and they are daughter ministry to vision carriers. Vision carriers um, is the ministry intercessor many women for intercessor drama ministry. So that's what they are about. So they are here. And by God's grace, that's on this platform. And we have some, uh, we have the, 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 the leadership in the house. We have them in the house. Our mommy is here. Glory be to God. And I already see our mommy too. Mommy Busayo Asikia. Thank you so much, Ma. God bless you, Ma. Thank you so much, Ma. We appreciate your coming. Please jam those hands together for Jesus. Uh, I'm looking for the video. Once I see the video, I'll spotlight. Spotlight them, hallelujah. And we also have a, 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 a mommy, mommy, Rebbe Bang Boje, as that's also part of the, the leaders. We will also be receiving administration later in the day. The Lord bless you, ma. We thank you. Our daddy, too, daddy, Yemi, Adipoju, is already also in the house. We are welcome, sir. 
We appreciate it. That's the daddy of the overcomers. Hallelujah. You're welcome, sir. So we have uh, joining us again today for the program. We'll be having our beloved brother, Damilola and my family. will be joining us for the um, roundtable uh, discussions and, and questions and answers. So thank you so much, Ma. We, have, we really appreciate you. Thank you very, very much, Ma. So, all right. Quickly, we are going to the testimonies, and now we are calling sister or brother. This is Adeni Toluwala She. Please unmute yourself and uh, and share your testimony. I would appreciate if you can come up with your video, actually. So, please unmute yourself, please. And sister or brother, Adeni Toluwala She, unmute yourself. Just press the unmute button. All right, maybe we, we, we'll come back to that. Then we have somebody raise hand again. That's, um, I don't know. This is Shana Lee. I wanted to ask you to unmute yourself. Glory be to God. Glory be to uh, God. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You don't want to put on your video. I'm trying, but the settings on my phone, I have to. Oh, maybe. I think it, it just come up now. Hallelujah. All right, we are with you. Turn on the light. Glory yeah. be to God. I just want to thank God because I'm Jamaican origin and I currently live in the U.S. And man, this program has blessed my life, transformed my life so much. Even thinking of it right now, I'm kind of emotional because I remember how I started out so lost on this journey, but... God has really used this program to bless and transform me. So I'm just grateful to God. Keep doing what you guys are doing. It is helping out people worldwide. Like worldwide. My mother, she cannot get enough. And we're a house full of Jamaicans. So glory be to God, everybody. Big up yourself. I'm blessed up. Thank you. God bless you. What well, the Lord that's done shall be permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. That's that's our sister Shana Lee from the United States, and she's also Jamaican origin. That's what she said. God bless you, man. You see, now the God is doing wonders all the way from where we are, where you had your testimony will come to you as long as your heart is open to receive. Right then, the United States, God is doing miracles. So if you are in this country, you know, your own is you are, it's like you're closer. So please open your heart. Hallelujah. So I don't know if our uh, sister is ready now. Um, Adeni Toluwa Lashe, just press the unmute button and then speak. All right, do you have any other person that has testimonies? Okay, I think the network is, is, is it maybe we'll come back to that. Hallelujah. All right, we still have some more time. We covered more testimonies along the line as you as you think about what the Lord has done for you. God bless you, my, your testimony shall be permanent in the name of Jesus. So we are moving straight away to the message and by God's grace, bringing us the first message on this same thing, same thing from the beginning. When, mom, when, when, when uh, I asked mommy, is it the same thing? He said, God is speaking to us from diverse ways on the same thing. And that's it, God can say one thing and you keep see, and you keep seeing different versions of it as it keeps opening it. You say, "Is it still on this agenda?" Praise God! So before we welcome Mommy, Mommy said something in our introduction. He said, "You are God's agenda." I don't know if you believe that. You know, it talks about we being engraved on the palms of God's hand. We are engraved in the palms of His hand. So if you believe that, just type, "I am God's agenda." I am God's agenda. Repeat it. Yeah. Say. I am God's agenda. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what's happening to you right now, but let this one enter into you. You are God's agenda. You are not going to be lost. You're not going to fail. You're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it. I am God's agenda. Just type it. I'm expecting. Type it. Type it. I'm God's agenda. I'm God's agenda. I am God's agenda. As so I type in it, say it. I am God's agenda. Hallelujah. So with Jesus joy, welcome our mommy for the first message. Mommy, you're welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for what you have for us today. We thank you for your servants at the house that you are using for us today. And we thank you, Father, for this short introduction message 
and we believe you are going to bless us, you are going to deliver us, you are going to revive us, you are going to strengthen us, even all your children to fulfill your purpose this end time in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your words. We shall be blessed in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's just a very short message. And I, before the minister of God comes around to minister to us, I want to read from the book of Joy, chapter 2, verse 28. It's one of the agenda. You know, from the beginning of this program, men of God have been talking to us about God's agenda. Different, different beautiful programs that God has for us. Single sisters, single brothers in the house. So you are not a waste. You are special. You are you are important in the hand of God. If you if you can just uh, look, look back and think of messages that have been coming out to us, you will see how important you are. So one of the agenda of God is what I want to read here. That is Joel chapter two, verse twenty eight. Said, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That's one of God's agenda for all the single sisters and brothers. He said, your old men shall see, shall dream dreams. And he said, your young men, young men, young men and women, you know, we are all sons of God. He said, they shall, they shall see visions, visions. So in the fulfillment of every vision you see, definitely there will be battle. So when you are talking about vision, it's not the one you only see when you sleep. It's vision about what God wants to do to you. Great exploits that God has prepared you to carry out. What God has built you to fulfill in life. That is vision. Like in drama now, I find myself as a drama minister, when I was single, I was a single sister, and I just loved to serve God. And I find myself in the midst of drama units, I mean drama groups. And that's where the vision started. But not knowing that that was the purpose, that is the purpose of God for my life. So every single sisters and brothers, you are to see vision. You are to see plan of God, the plan of God, what God wants you to become in life. You know, the vision, look at Joseph. Joseph saw the vision when he was very young like 70 years or 60 years of old, and he saw vision of what God wants to do through him. He saw himself standing up. He saw himself reigning in the palace. He saw himself becoming solution to people's problem. God showed it to him at that age. That is the reason why you can't just be sitting down, doing nothing at this stage. If you don't see, if you are, if you are not involved, if you don't involve yourself in the plan of God for your life, Satan will engage you. He will show you to see different things, things that are not edifying, things that can destroy you and, and nullify the plan of God for your life. But Joseph saw the vision. And from this scripture, he said, you will see vision. Many youth are not seeing vision today because they don't know God. That is one of the points you must, you, must, you must receive in this program. You need to know God to see vision. If you don't know God, you will see nonsense. So many youth are being corrupted today because they are seeing something negative. They don't see what they are supposed to see because they don't know God. It is God that will show you that vision. God wants to show you things about yourself. He wants to show you things that will become for him. Joseph was able to see because he knew God. Most of his siblings didn't know God, so they couldn't see anything. But Joseph, as tender, at that tender age, was able to see the mind of God. He was able to see into the future because he knew God. So from this program, if you have not given your life to Jesus, the God we are talking about is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know God through Jesus. Whatever might be your background, you need Jesus in your life. So if you're in this program, you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, this is the time, the best time for you to accept that Jesus into your life. When you know Jesus, your life will be, will be fulfilled. 
Esther knew Jesus at that very tender age. She submitted to God under her uncle. And because she gave her life to Jesus Christ, she received direction. She was able to, to, to go to the next level. She was able to know the mind of God for her life through her uncle. She became the, the queen in the land. And before you knew it, you know it, she became the savior, delivering people of God from bondage. So there are things God wants you to do. Single sister, you are not different from single brother. You are both sons of God. If you are not yet married, you can see vision. So wait, you have to give your life to that Jesus Christ. If I, if I've not given my life to Jesus Christ, I cannot be doing what I'm doing today. I can't imagine what they will have done with my life. Because there are temptations in the world today. Temptations even within the church of God. So many youth have been distracted from the purpose of God for their life. But in this program, you will see vision in Jesus' name. In this program, you will know God in Jesus' name. You will give your life to Jesus Christ. And you see, when you know Jesus Christ, when you accept him as your Lord and Savior, and you begin to walk with God faithfully, that's another key point for you to receive God's agenda for your life. You walk with God faithfully. Some of us, we are born again. Some are even born in the church. They are even born by pastors, but they are not working faithfully with God. They are like Hophni and Phineas in the Bible. They were born by the priest, but they were not living for God. They were messing things around, uh, messing things around in, the, in the church of God. They were doing nonsense. They were working against God. Though they present, you know, they presented themselves to be holy before their father. Many youths today are working in hypocrisy. They are not working right. So they can't see what God want them to see. Liu Ben was the firstborn of Jacob. He was supposed to take over the blessing the father left, even be more than the bread brethren. But because he did not work right, he messed up through the fornication. And what happened to Liu Ben? All his blessings were canceled, given to his brethren. So if you are working against God, you can't see anything. Your life will never be fulfilled. If you are not working faithfully, though you are in church of God, you are in the choir, you are singing for God, they know you as sweet brother and sister, but you know what you are practicing in the secret. You know the life you are living. And this God is a spirit. He sees into your heart. What your mommy and daddy, what they don't see, God sees everything. That is why you must work with God faithfully so that you can see what happened to Joseph. When he was in the part of Pharaoh's, when he was moving on his journey to fulfill his purpose. That's another point you need to know that as you are moving forward to fulfill your purpose in life, there will be opposition from the devil. You must prepare yourself. That is when you, for you to see the vision is not only, it's not, it's not the end of the for, to pursue your vision, there will be opposition from the devil, from the world, from the paths of darkness. Who want to distract it? Who want to distract you? But you know that God has given you the power through the Lord Jesus Christ. Esther was able to move on to fulfill her purpose. Daniel, they faced opposition, but they determined to serve God. They apply faith. That is the power of your faith. So as you are accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and you are born again, you have the faith inside of you. With that faith, you will overcome the devil. If Daniel has not believed what God, and what is faith? Faith in this context is to believe and walk in the instruction of God. What is God telling you to do as a as single sister? Like a sister that, that raised the first prayer point. As single sisters, we are to live for God. We are to abide in him. But when you are working against God, you are working against faith. As a child of God who has been born again, you, you say you are born again, but you know what you are doing in the secret. You know the life you are living. The Bible says, you single sister, said we should flee. Single brother, flee youthful loss. There are lost in the world today. Not even only in the world, even in the church of God. There are people devil has you know, poured into the world to distract the attention of the believers. But you have the power. You have that faith. See, hear what 1 John chapter 5 says here. He said, for whoever is born of God overcometh the world. 
And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. He said, who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believe that Jesus is the son of God. So your victory, your victory is in that faith. If you are born again, if you are a child of God, whatever the devil is bringing to distract your attention, you can say no to the devil if you can trust that Jesus will believe. If you can rest, if you can hold on to the faith that God has given you. That is, believing and rest in the power of God. Believe God that he will see you through. Believe God that you will not fall. Joseph believed God. That was why I was able to face that woman. The devil has already strategically positioned the woman to distract his attention, even though he was a slave. But he knew where he was going. That is the reason why you must know where you are going. You must, the vision must be strong. It must be clear before you. You must know where God is taking you. As the word of God be coming out, you must receive vision. Joseph has already seen the vision right from home. He knew that he was going to the top. He knew that all his brethren will bow for him. He knew where God is taking him. He has an assignment up there and he was focused. So when the temptation came for him to be distracted from the will of God, he, the Bible said that he told the woman, how can I do this and sin against God? He didn't say, how can I do this and sin against my pastor? and sin against my parents. Some of us, we are holy, we are afraid of our parents. We are not afraid of God. You don't know that your parents are human being too. The fear of God must possess you, not the fear of man. So you don't, you can't, you can't get to the top. You can't be fulfilled by, I mean, being afraid of men. Let God be your focus. Let him be your fear. That was what helped Joseph. He said, how can I do this? And sin against God. And he flee. He didn't say, stay there trying to, no, he flee. That's what the Bible says for all the singles. But where have you been falling and rising every day? Many of us have been falling and rising in fornication. You can't be moving like that and get to where you are going. Your future will be affected. So if Joseph has submitted his will, his desire to demand, I mean, to obey the woman by lying with the woman, what do you think will have become of Joseph? He will have died a slave. Even if he's been, if he's been promoted, if the woman promotes him, uh, make him, uh, he will still be a slave. He will never get to the top. But because he said no to the devil, God promoted him, even though he suffered for a while, but he got there. That is faith. He hold on to what he has received from God. Singles in the house, you have power to hold on. You have power to say no to the devil. God wants to do great things in your life. You are the future. God wants to use you beyond our fathers and mothers. But you must learn to say no by faith to the devil. When you get yourself rooted in God, nothing can move you. So, so we say, ah, how can I, can I, is it possible for me to say without doing this? You can do, you can, you can stand because the power that is in you is greater than the one in the world. Joseph was able to say no to sin, even when he was put in the prison, even though he suffered, yet he was awful. He believed God because God has already revealed to him the purpose, his purpose for his life. So singles in the house, I want you to, to determine today to accept that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and if you have been falling today, rise tomorrow, you have not been faithful. You need to come back home by asking Jesus Christ to forgive all your sins so that you can be ministered to the Holy Ghost We enter into your life. You receive power to say no to sin. You will go beyond this level because God is, 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 bringing, is bringing souls, sons into his kingdom, sons that he will use, daughters of God, that will rise up like, like, like Esther, that God will pick out of many to stand and to raise the banner of Jesus Christ. So where have you been falling down? It is time for you to receive the power. The grace of God will rest upon you. You overcome the devil, you overcome sin. You will, you will, you will see loss and you will run because you will, not, you, 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 will, you will not want to pollute yourself. So before we go into the main message, I want to challenge you this evening. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, this is the time. 
You need Jesus. You cannot do it alone. The forces in the world today, there are many powers of darkness, demonic people walking like human beings that are even within the campuses around. You see what is happening to many people there. But do you know that you can overcome all, you can overcome the devil, you can overcome sin, you can make it, you can get to the top God has prepared for you if you can just, you know, walk with Christ, partner with Jesus. Let him be, he wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. You can't do it alone. You need his strength. You need his power. So wherever you have missed it, maybe you have fallen short of God's grace in one way or the other. You have compromised as a believer. You have engaged in sin. I'm telling you, you can confess to Christ today. You can say, Lord, I'm sorry. And then receive the life of Christ back into your life so that you can go higher in him. Oh, you have not even for once given your life to Jesus Christ. This is the time. It is the spirit of God that will empower you. It is that same spirit that will strengthen you, that will make a way for you. It is the spirit of Christ that will teach you. He said, I will teach you in the way you will go. He said, grace shall be the peace of our children, for they shall be taught of the Lord. You want God to teach you? When God teach you, you will not miss it in life. When God directs your step, you will be fulfilled in life. God will make sure you live to fulfill your purpose. Many, many of our fathers today who, are, who, God, who God is using today, they have passed through this stage before. Daniel was faced with serious opposition, but he was able to overcome because he put his trust in God. Where is your faith? Many sisters are falling for sin, for immorality, because of lack of faith in what God can do in their life. So I'm calling on you today. If you are here under the voice, under my voice, and you want to say, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. I want to get there. I want, I want my inner eyes to be opened. I've not been able to see, but I want to see. It is that Jesus Christ that will open your inner eyes to see the mind of God for your life. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, because it is the most important thing you need in your life, having Jesus in your life. I gave my life to Jesus when I was in primary school, and that spirit has never, he has, he has never departed from He's still with me till today. The spirit that will guide you, that will teach you, that will lead you, that will direct your step, it is the spirit of Christ. And it is when you have Jesus in your life that the spirit will enter into your life. And then when you walk faithfully with him, God will begin to lead and direct you. So I want to pray for us today. If you need Jesus as a Lord and Savior, just say this prayer after me. I want to pray for as many as are ready. Or maybe you have compromised. You have, you have messed up. God can still welcome you. He's your father. He has the best for you. He has your interests at heart. He has beautiful plan for you. What your father and your mother cannot give you, Jesus will. Can they even save you? Can your mother and father protect you? They are human beings, but God will protect you and will preserve you. So close your eyes and say this prayer briefly after me. Say, my Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for all I've done. I'm sorry for the way I've been living my life. I'm sorry for for not obey your word. Forgive me, Lord. Have mercy on me today. I want to know you. I want to be your child. I want to be fulfilled in life. I don't want able to waste my life. I want to even get to heaven and see you at the end of the day. Father, therefore, I open up to you today. I've done this. Thank God what you have done. I've sinned against you. I've committed abortion. Let Jesus know that. I've not been working right. I've been messing up. I've been unfaithful to you. Lord Jesus, forgive me today. Have mercy on me and write my name in the book of life. Today, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Today, I release my life into your hand. Jesus, come and help me. Save my soul. Cleanse me with your precious blood and make me your child. Father, open my eyes to see. I want to know your plan for my life. The thought you have for me is the thought of good. 
to have an expected end. Those beautiful things were for me. I want my eyes to be opened to see my glorious future. Therefore, Jesus, remove every blindness, spiritual blindness, take it away from me today in Jesus' name. And open my inner eyes to see you. I believe you today. I'm delivered from the hand of the devil. I'm a child of God. I'm born again. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father Lord, I will pray for you right now, wherever you are. Just lay your hand on your chest as I'm praying right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, one of the purpose of this program is to save souls, is to deliver your children, is to snatch them from the hand of the devil, is to separate them from the hand of the evil ones. Therefore, I pray for as many as have given their life to you today. Father, let your spirit enter into their life right now. Reveal yourself to them, Lord Jesus Christ. Let the blood of Jesus perfect their life and begin to walk in them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I rebuke every work of the devil in your life, every manipulation, every manipulation from the kingdom of darkness. Oh, against these ones, we destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. I pronounce deliverance upon your life. Those who have been falling and rising receive strength today. You will not fall again in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of God will sustain you. You will fulfill God's purpose in Jesus' name. Power of the Holy Ghost enter into the life of these ones. Begin to dwell in them and teach them your ways. Let them know you. Let them walk in your fear. Let them abide in you. Protect them from all evil. You kept Joseph. You kept Esther. You kept Daniel, even in, the week, in, in, a, in, a, in a Gentile nation. This was wherever they are, let your invisible hand, that all over Boboro, this, your outstretched mighty hands, let it begin to keep them from all evil in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the fear of God begin to reside in them right now and begin to prepare them ready for wonders and miracles to be performed in their lives. Whatever might be their problem, is this sickness or disease, we command them to vanish today in Jesus' name. They are delivered by the, by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, uphold these ones and use them for your glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. If you are sincerely saved now, write it, type it, just begin to say, I'm saved. I'm delivered. I'm free. I want to see it right now. Begin to say it to the shame of the devil. Tell the devil I'm free. I'm delivered. I'm, I'm moving higher. I fulfill purpose. Keep saying it because God has set you free. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, to God be the glory. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. And praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Ma. Well, thank you, Father. We we'll give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to pray for mommy. She has just, uh, what the, the Lord has just saved so many of us tonight. By this simple message, he has recalled, he consigned us unto himself. Can we say the Lord will continue to replenish mommy in the name of Jesus? Fresh unction, fresh grace, a fresh passion. You can see the passion with which he's speaking, that we may get it, that we may align with God's agenda for our life, that the Lord will renew our strength in the mighty name of Jesus. That the Lord will strengthen her. The Lord will keep her steady yes. in the name of Jesus. More visions for the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. More revelations, more wisdom, more strength, more health in the name of Jesus. More unction and anointing in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give all the glory, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Wow, her God is good. Hallelujah. That, 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 that's, that's setting us on. It's just like we, the Lord has just started something new in our lives. 
I can see a, a lot of us that made that, that, that decision. I tell you, you are saved. And it's a joy to welcome you into the family of God. You're welcome back into his presence. You're welcome back. In, welcome home. Welcome back. Welcome back. Jesus, it is joy in heaven because you're back. There's joy in heaven. So no, 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 no more, no more shrinking, no more fear, no, no more shame. You have been liberated. You are out of the bondage of the enemy. You are liberated. Now you are free. The Lord has released you. So you are free. Be joyful. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God praise. Exalt him. Bless him. I'm free. Hallelujah. That is it. Amen and amen. I want to tell or let us know that this program is also on Facebook and on YouTube. And as I was, I was checking the comments there, they are also enjoying just the same presence we have here is what they are feeling. They are sharing their testimonies there. So please, they, you can still invite your friends. The program is here. You can see the Lord see has acquired a lot of things to do. And you can see already that we're getting blessed. The Lord bless you, man. God bless you. And God bless everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. Shortly before we receive the administration of our, their pastor, he, he, yeah. When I saw his speech, I said, wow, he, he, he's already with us. Hallelujah. You're welcome, sir. God bless you. So show joining us. Okay. Um, okay, one minute. All right. Okay, welcome our pastor. Everybody just welcome our pastor now. Can see. Hey, just one minute, one minute. I can see him waving. All right, quickly. Let me just welcome our pastor. All right. Welcome, so just wait to us. Just, just, just greet us. You're welcome. Thank yeah, you so welcome. much. You're welcome, sir. We'll be receiving your ministration shortly after this music ministration. You're mm -hmm. welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. That's Pastor Tokpe Awufi, sire. You're welcome, sir. All right. So Zion Singers, are you ready for the music ministration? Zion Singers, are you ready? Are you ready? Hallelujah. Over to you. Unmute yourself, please. Zion Singers, you're welcome. We can't hear your voice. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, okay, go ahead. Thank you. 
Let us, um, all right. Hallelujah. That song is saying, I give myself away so that you can use me. I give myself away so that you can use me. Take my life, take my heart, I give myself away. I don't want you to just um, take it, turn it to prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Just take it, turn it to prayers. All I give myself to you in the name of Jesus. I give myself to you in the name of Jesus. I give myself away so that you can use me. That is the essence of our life, that you can use us that we can be fit. He said, if you put yourself from these things, then you can be fit for the master's use. The Lord, I release myself. I just release myself. Take this life. Take this life. What is left of it? Just take it and use it in the name of Jesus. Take my life, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I give myself away so that you can use me. Use me for your plan. Use me for your agenda. Use me for your glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give all the glory, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My prayer is the Lord. We use for his glory at all times in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, um, Zion Singers. The Lord bless you. Thank you for that powerful administration. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Time we've been waiting in there. Hallelujah. The time has come. So before I bring up the, the man of God, I want to just a short bow about him. Uh, our, our pastor today, Pastor Tokwe Awuki Sayo, he is the lead pastor and um, the founder and president of Communion Christian Center and Life Channel Ministries. And um, Life Channel Ministries is, a, is an outreach ministry, also known as Tokwe Awuki Sayo Ministries International, which began fully in November 2003 at Obafemi Awolo University. And they started with free distribution of gospel newsletters, they started with special programs and outreaches on campus in cities with testimonies of changed lives, healings and miracles following the preaching of God's word and impartation of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Lord has been doing to our beloved man of God. He is the founder and the lead pastor of Communion Christian Center. He is the president of Life Channel Ministries and is envisioned and passionate about helping men to discover and fulfill their God-given assignment on earth through teaching, preaching and impartation of God's word and by the spirit of God. And I believe that this passion that he has will translate in this message to us today in the mighty name of Jesus. So expect it, expect transformation, expect impartation tonight in the name of Jesus. And I will just say this, please, this is not the time to play around. This is the time to listen to what God has for you. And I know that you shall be blessed. So with a joyful heart, and a club innovation. Let's welcome to the glory of God, our beloved pastor, Pastor Tokpe. I will fire you. Welcome, sir. All right. Thank you um, very much, our Hanko. I want to really appreciate uh, you. Um, I want to first and foremost appreciate God um, for the grace that he has given unto me. I want to believe everybody, you can hear me clearly. If you can yes, hear me, sir, you can just can. wave and um, let me just... Um, or um, in the chat box, um, inbox, you can just let me confirm. Thank you. All right. Um, since you can hear me clearly, um, I want to first appreciate God and give him praise for the opportunity that he has granted me to be here today uh, to be a blessing to everybody. And I want to thank our uh, daddy and mommy, Bamiloye, um, for that um, privilege um, that I have, um, um, I have from them. Um, they are actually, they've actually been um, channels of uh, blessings um, and um, uh, mentoring. And I remember back in those days, I've always been, I was also fully into them. I'm still in drama ministry though. <laughs> so um, God has used them to really train us um, back then um, through uh, training, teachings. I remember going for answer drum meetings and all that. And then the opportunities I've had to minister in one or two places with them um, uh, it has been a very huge blessing. I remember um, 
uh, both of them were sharing with me on the plane one day from a particular part, from one part of the country to this other part of the country to Lagos. And then what they shared with me that day uh, did not leave me. I'm not sure mommy can remember all that, but then, you know, they've impacted so many people. And I thank God for your life, uh, for being um, huge, huge blessing to the body of Christ and for organizing um, a timeout like this. Um, I believe that God is going to speak um, expressly um, to us tonight, and then there's going to be impartation as the word of God is spoken. And thank you, Ma, for that wonderful word. It was um, so sharp and direct. And thank God for the soul saved. Um, let me first establish this as I go before I pray. Bible says, why Peter speak? Why Peter yes speak? The Holy Spirit came down on those who heard him. So I believe that whenever the word of God is spoken, the spirit of God is in action. The Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 63, is the spirit of the Lord that give life. Flesh profit nothing. And Bible says that, you know, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. All right, they are spirit and life. So I believe that as the word is spoken, um, you are not just receiving the knowledge, you are not just receiving um, revelation, you are not just receiving the illumination, you are receiving also impartation. And I believe God today that somebody you know, life will shift forward in God. Somebody will come into a discovery of those things that God has in mind for them. I strongly believe, and I'm praying right now, by the spirit of the Lord, I want you to connect with me from home. I want you to focus. I want you to look onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. I want you to, you know, um, respond in that chat room. I want you to be connected and be active. We are youth, we are young, and we are strong and strengthened. So I am praying right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, there will be elevation, there will be discovery, there will be transformation, there will be promotion, there will be rejuvenation, there will be um, transformation, there will be impartation, there will be envisioning of heavenly agenda, impartation of heavenly agenda on the tablet of our spirit, I will never, never be the same again. Lord, we humble ourselves, we receive your word, you know, with meekness, and we ask that your word transforms our life, and at the end of the day, we live to fulfill our purpose and destinies on the earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So, I need to see you typing amen, you know, as you say amen in your home. So I'm glad to be here. I like to talk to singles. I like to talk to young people, all right? And um, don't mind me if I share stories. I try to share testimonies. Um, I got born again at the age of 10. Eventually, you see, I used to be born again. And then, you know, like I took my, I would take my life. I would submit it. I would take it, you know, that's <laughs> just a... Uh, you know, um, like a joke in a way, but you know what that means. That is, you determined, you decided for God, and then maybe you slipped, um, you know, into sin or all that. I mean, I was much more younger, but finally, at the age of 10, I decided for God, all right? I've not gone too far into the world. See, I, I don't know too many things of the way of the world, but by the virtue of pastoring, God has exposed me to so many vices of the darkness because people, you know, God has to give them a word. God has to get them transformed. So I got born again at the age of 10. And then, you know, in those days, there were not too much teachings on the Holy Spirit, impartation and all that. In fact, people that were speaking in tongues were being criticized. So it took me almost four years to, to be able to speak in tongues. I was, you know, baptized in the Holy Ghost at the age of 14. And then that happened personally. You know, most of the things I will share with you, they are personal experience, you know, um, that happened between me, like an audience of one and God, all right? And then I've always had a passion and a love for the things of God, even though, you know, I came into a family where my, my parents, um, you know, back then were like nominal Christians who just like to socialize. They are like socialites, you know, enjoy themselves and all that, you know. But then, um, you know, according to God's divine agenda, all right, God had chosen me even before I was put in my mother's womb. I mean, if you remember... Um, Sammy says that in Psalm 
um, 139, um, the scripture says in Psalm 139, he said, you formed me. I'm using the person translation. You know, young people nowadays, you, you have access to different kinds of passions. I know our mommy and daddy, um, they are King James people. So they will bear with us. So we are going to be reading different kinds of versions. Praise God. <laughs> you see, it makes the word much more contemporary. And then he brings it home with you. Yes. All right. So it says, you, I'm reading Psalm 139 verse 13. You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate house. You see that? And wove them all together in my mother's womb. So it was God that packaged you. It was God that you are not a legit, an illegitimate child. You didn't come by accident. It was all the plan of God. Even if God you know, um, even if your parents didn't plan you, you see, there are people like that. You see, they tell them, we don't plan you. We didn't, you know, um, plan for you. In fact, we stop uh, child bearing. And then, you know, you can see you came six months, uh, six years later, 10 years later. You know, um, some of you, you had the record of probably you were born out of wedlock, born inside wedlock, beside wedlock, over wedlock, whatever. The way, the, what is very important is that you are here, praise God. Yeah. Now, if you know that you are here and you are here, you can put it there that the, what, the most important thing in the plan of God is that I am here. Finally, I am here. And you be here, you are here for a particular motive. You are here for a particular purpose. God thought about you and formed you. He took care. You know, the King James Version will say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. See, God was careful when he was making you. He had to put your nose the right way it's supposed to be. He, he was careful, really. He put your, he designed your destiny is the master architect of everything. Even if you are misbehaving right now, it all still sum up. There is no way you can get out of God's agenda because this is one of the reasons why mommy has to organize this program because God is looking for a way to bring you back to him so that you can recognize and discuss that. You know, discover that. You see, mommy was talking about how she gave her life to Christ when she was in primary school. You see that God already knew she was coming. God orchestrated a part in such a way that, you know, she will be born again at that time. And then, and then as she was growing in the Lord and all that, I've seen that movie, very powerful movie, you know, and then God orchestrated a part into his school and orchestrated her daddy's part. And that's how God works. All right. Because it knows that once you are sent here to fulfill an agenda or to fulfill a purpose of God in his mind, God already planned you. Look at verse 14. He said, I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. This is what <laughs> mysteriously complex. You don't even know so much about yourself. You are evolving. There are so much about you. Let me tell you, if God tells you just 1% about yourself, you'll not be messing up with yourself. You'll not be messing up with your body. You'll be messing up. I mean, you will be listening to elders. You will want to follow. You want to submit yourself to mentoring. You want to submit yourself to the word of God, submit yourself to the Holy Spirit. He said, thank you for making me, you know, so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. Can you see that? It's marvelously breathtaking. I love the version. The version. He said, it simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. Can you see that? How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You see what happened before you started existing in the body like this? You were existing as spirits before with the Lord. And God sent you here. You know the funniest thing? It could be that you don't even know who your mother is. You might not even know who your father is. The father just came and then met with your mom just for the purpose of you being here. You see, when we understand the in-depth of God's purpose for our life, it doesn't matter the circumstances that surrounded our birth. It doesn't matter the circumstance, how we were born and how we came, all right? What matters most is that we are here. All right. So you see what the Bible is saying. It says, I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you, you know, is breathtaking, marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me, Lord. You even formed every bone in my body. Can you see that? 
You formed every bone in my body. When you created me in the secret place, so God made you in the secret place. And let me tell you a secret here. If God makes you in the secret place, God is going to make sure that he reveals who you had to you in the secret place. God, and I'm going to get there, you know, God is going to make sure that he helps you, empowers you, and encourage you to, to, to fulfill your destiny, all right, by empowering and revealing who you had to you in the secret place. Now, look at that. He said, you even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place, Carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. I love that. Can you see that, Basham? You shaped me from nothing to something. Now, can you, you can just type it. I am shaped from nothing to something. From nothing to someone, to somebody. God already shaped you. God already designed you. God already saw your end from the beginning. God already saw your hand from beginning. Now, let me quickly tell you this. This is very simple. You know, have you ever seen any building, proper building being built before? They will have first and foremost be a model. The model for that house being built by the architect is the details of what is going to be built. All right. I want you to follow me. The details of what is going to be built. So this is what God did. All right. Now, when God designed you, created you, he did everything for the agenda that he has in his mind. Do you get what I'm saying? Not for your own selfish ambition, not for your own selfish desires, not for your own ambitions or um, aspiration. You see, as you are looking at me, I had plans to study engineering, my, 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 to become an engineer. My um, secondary school a foreign teacher told my parents that I would be better to study medicine and I, decide, I disappointed both myself and then I disappointed my teacher. Because when the calling came, my mom and my, my dad, they didn't even resist it because though they were nominal people, they were like socialites then, although thank God they became saved later. <laughs> you know, you can't give birth to children like um, a child like me and you remain unsaved, it's difficult. Even my extended families by the grace of God, um, um, they, they've been getting saved and then I'm believing God for more. So, you know, when they got born again later and now they opened up to me of what has been their experiences, I was supposed to be aborted. Now, let me just be frank with you. Probably they've told you you're supposed to be aborted. You know, you're born, you were not. And I'm, I happen to be the firstborn. Eventually, I happen to be the only boy. Can you imagine? The only male in the house, all right? So God has a special purpose. They were having fun. God was having plans. They were, are you getting what I'm saying? That's the way it is, okay? And then I am telling you, God carefully, according to this scripture, he said, when you created me in the secret place, and don't forget what I said, mark that secret place. If he made you in the secret place, created you in the secret place, is going to grow you in the secret place, is going to lift you in the secret place, is going to empower you in the secret place, and is going to anoint you in the secret place, is going to bless you in the secret place before you get into the public place. Now, look at it, he said, carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. I love that. You saw who you created me to be. Oh, glory to God. God saw everything. Like a master architect, we see the end of the building before they start laying the foundation. You know, they will have seen, the architects will have seen the end of the building. I'm not talking about the roadside builder or something. I'm talking about somebody who really have a plan and have a model, have a model. And each time he's looking at the model as they are building. Sometimes they might have rubbles, they might have sand, they might have water, they might have all kinds of stuff in the site. It might not look like it yet, but in the heart of the architect, he knows the house is going to eventually build. In the heart of God, God knows what you are eventually going to turn out to become. So that's what the Bible said. He said, you saw me before I became me. You saw the end of me before I became me. The Bible passage is Psalm 139. I like the way you are communicating to me. I mean, I love, it's a wonderful class. Psalm 139, I'm read, I've been reading from verse 13. I'm reading the Passion Translation. And he said, you saw me before I became me, before I will ever see the light of day. The numbers of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. I love that. Can you see? You can't just die anyhow. God already knew the numbers of years you are going to spend, the numbers of days when you are going to live. 
And that is what it is, just a wonderful thing, a joyful thing, a, 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 um, a, a pleasurable thing to work with God. Do you understand? When you're not supposed to die, you can't just die. Are you getting what I'm saying? I've always been saying this thing when I was much more younger, from my teenage years. You know, I can't just die on the road. I've done all kinds of travels here, land, even water. I have not, there is not, because I know I'm just scratching what God has called me to do. And I still have so much to do. So he recorded your numbers. Of, you know, this is why Jesus Christ says, Lord, I've come in the volume of book written of me. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, if you, if you see Psalm, you know, in the book of Psalm 37 or thereabout, the same, he was prophesied of Jesus and he mentioned of, he said, the steps of a good man are hurdled by the Lord and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not utterly cast down for the Lord opposes him in his hands. For the Lord opposes him in his hands. Now, if you continue to read and all that, you say, he talks about uh, God as written, so much as written, as uh, God is written of him, um, um, in his book. Now, because I don't have all the time, so I need to quickly just, you can reach this place on your home so that you know that God has a good uh, stuff for you. Let's quickly look at Jeremiah. You know, I'm going to talk about some people. You know, Jeremiah, Jeremiah was 17 when God called him. He was a teenager, all right? And he was even arguing with, with God that God, he was giving God excuse rather, all right? Um, he was giving God excuse Um he was giving God excuse um, that he's not going to be able to actually um, um, answer God's call because he's young, Jeremiah. Yeah. Yes. So in Jeremiah, um, the book of Jeremiah, um, if you read Jeremiah chapter 1, um, if you read Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. All right. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. He said, Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Can you see the same thing um, Psalmist says? Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So I am telling you, uh, uh, whether you are Tunde, you are Bolu, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are um, Prince, you are whoever, God knew you before he formed you. Now, before you were born, I sanctified you. So that means he separated you. That's what Paul was saying. He said, he set me apart from my mother's womb. You can imagine, even though Paul went to become whatever he liked, you know, by himself, he was crucifying, you know, people he was persecuting, but eventually um, he had to come back to the gospel. So he said, before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Can you see that? Then said, hi, ha, Lord, ha. So that's, that's an exclamation, an expression of shock. Ha, Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. Can you imagine? I can speak for two days on that particular expression. For I am a youth. Don't forget, Elihud was a youth. Bible says that there is a spirit in man. It was the one that said it, all right? He said the spirit of the Lord, all right, give him an understanding. There's a spirit in man. Hollywood was a youth. He said he waited for the aged to speak. So you are not going to allow anybody to despise you. Can you get what I'm saying? God has awesome plans for your life. God has beautiful plans for your life. Paul told Timothy, he said, let no man despise your youth. Let no man despise. You are not supposed to be shut down. You are not supposed to be um, told you are nobody. You are not supposed to be. You are supposed to incline with the plan of God for your life. Yes, I agree with the fact that you can be struggling at the moment. And as I'm speaking to you, every yoke of addiction, yoke of immorality, everything is breaking, just like our mother has prayed. And I am believing God for you because right from here, some of you, you are going to rise up and become a worldwide, you know, proclaimer of the gospel by the power of the Holy Ghost. God is going to use your profession, your career, your business, your study, all right, to spread the kingdom of God, to spread the message of love, to spread the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. And God yes. is going to use, if you believe that, you say, man, you respond, glory to God. You see, I'd like you to rejoice wherever you are because this is a message of hope, it's a message of faith, it's a message of greatness that is coming to you. Regardless of what you're going through, probably you have issues with funding, you have issues with finances, 
probably you don't even have where to lay your head. God is saying, I know you. God is saying, I am sending you. God is saying, I've ordained you. God is saying, I've sanctified you. God is saying, I've imparted you. And then he said, look, I have an excuse, just like Moses at the age of 80, also said, I am a stutterer. You remember, all right? He said, I have an excuse too. There is no body that will never be sufficient of themselves when God is calling them. The vision of God will forever be bigger than any man combined. All of us combined on the earth, over 8 billion or almost 8 billion or whatever, the vision of God will ever be bigger than what we think or imagine. So the vision of God is bigger than us. I never planned I was going to be here. I, I, I read engineering. Um, I did MBA, and then I've always been responding to the call of God. He called me at the age of 19. I, he called me when I was, um, that was 1999, eventually, all right? And then, you know, I started doing things. Life Channel that you mentioned started when I was 21, 21. So if you listen to that biography so you can predict my age, <laughs> everything is so simple when <laughs> you see that. So as since then, we have been bowling for the Lord. You know the word bowling? I know you are a single person. You know what it means to bowl. So some people bowl for the devil. That means you are rolling and you are living for the Lord. You are basking in the glory of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so I need to speak to you um, in a, a, a more simplified language that you can understand. So he said, I cannot speak. So he said, I cannot speak. And so you have excuses too. You cannot speak. Maybe you are shy or you don't have enough certificates or your parents are not, I mean, they are not, you know, um, you know, they are not together. Or there is one excuse or the other. But you know what the Lord said? God said, shut up. God said, keep short. God said, chill. God said, chill, calm down. Do not say, I am a youth. He said, for you shall go to all. God is not even trying to settle anything with him. He said, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. Can you imagine? God is sending you. God has called you. God has ordained you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Let me, let me just, you can read on. You can read on because of time. I'm just trying to save time. I want to quickly go to Jeremiah, you know, Jeremiah chapter, um, Jeremiah chapter, uh, 29, 29, I'm reading verse 11, uh, verse 11, because when we're talking about God's agenda, we're talking about God's heartbeat for us, all right? You know, God's so, God's so good. I did a series last month on God's agenda and life possibilities. So when we're talking about God's agenda, it's not um, um, an ambition thing. It's not um, your aspiration. It's not what we like to become. I like to become a doctor. I like to become, there is nothing wrong with that. That's fantastic. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> when we're talking about God agenda, and I'm going to teach you how to get into the flow to know that agenda. You see that? So look at what Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Now let's, let's read the common uh, King James version that um, let's identify with our parents in the Lord here. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thought of peace. Now, God is saying, I am thinking towards you. Now, I didn't just send you here. I am still having a thought towards you. I have an agenda. His thought towards you is his agenda. You see that? His thought towards you is his plan for your life. Another version says, I know the thought, the plan that I have towards you. If you read NIV, he said, they are thought of peace. The word peace there is shalom, prosperity and rest. They are thought of peace, prosperity and tranquility. You see what it says, thought of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Can you see that? God already promised he has your future in view. God already built you before taking you back to start physically constructing you. Can you see that? To start spiritually constructing you. You see, let me tell you something about God's, you know, um, um, when it comes to his agenda and his purpose. God never starts a thing until he has finished it. I want you to take note of that. God never starts a thing until he has finished it. You see, architect has finished the building in their mind as a model. And they now go to the field to start building. God never starts a thing until it, uh, he has finished um, the thing. God already designed you. He knew how you will end on the earth. He knew how everything will be. And I believe 
that God of heaven is going to guide your path, is going to supervise, is going to lead you in the mighty name of Jesus. You see now, he says that to give you a future and a home, glory to God. That's, that's something to shout about there. That's something to rejoice about there. If you look at Jonah, his path, his purpose in God was to deliver Nineveh. If you look at Moses, the path was the emancipation of the Israelites and settling them in Canaan. If you look at Paul, Paul's path was to reach the Gentiles and to be a witness to the Jew. If you look at Jeremiah, the same thing, to speak the word, the word of the Lord. Look at our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, in John 12, 27, he said, Now my soul is deeply troubled. Should I pray? Father, save me from this hour. John 12, 27. Now my soul is deeply in trouble. That's when he was going to go to the cross. Should I pray? Father, save me from this hour. But this is the very reason why I came. So there is always a gender in God's name. God, Jesus came to die, to be buried, and to resurrect so that you and I can be saved. And thank God our mother has led us in salvation. Um, you know, and then some of you, you just got saved now. And then every one of us here, I want to believe we are saved. And Jesus did that. And that's why he came. You know, in another place, 1 John 3, 8, he said to destroy the works of the devil. In another place, Luke 4, 18 and 19, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to preach deliverance to the captives, and on and on like that. I have to be fast because there is somewhere I am going. Now, how do you discover this agenda? Now you know that God's plan, God's agenda, even your creation, your being sent here, your being born again, your God putting you in that family is for a purpose. God putting you in that family is for a purpose. You having that kind of father is for a purpose. The father that will not be there for you is for a purpose. Is part of the purpose. Is part of what God is building you to become. Are you getting what I'm saying? You going through that stress, you are going through looking for money to pay for school fees is part of what God wants to make you to become. I am telling you, the site normally doesn't look like it. You will see in any site, a building construction site, it's not a good site to build sometimes. If you walk in there, you can even step on something that is very delicate and dangerous for you. But there is a design in the heart of the architect that is already finished. And God is working towards it. I want you to, you know, I'm almost, I'm almost tempted to say, say to your neighbor, I am coming soon. God is already watching you. So you can write to us here. Yes. <laughs> you can write to us. Yes. I said, I am coming soon. You see, because God is building you, all of us, we are coming soon. Even our mommy, they are still being built. I know they, their strength is being renewed. They are not tired, you know. I mean, on YouTube, I follow them. So I see that they are not tired at all. I mean, to catch up with some of the things they are writing sometimes is, is, is a whole lot of work on its own. So you can see we are being built every day. Paul says we are being perfected as saints. We are being built. And so how can I, you know, enter into this God's agenda? I haven't heard so much about it. How can I log in into it? How can I subscribe to it as a believer? And I want you to take note of this. There is only one thing I want to tell you. I know there are so many points. I mean... Um, I've learned something that in giving people so many points, sometimes you can leave them more confused than they were before. So I want to just give you one point, one point. But in that one point, I will be saying a lot of things in passing that you must take note. You know, as a youth, you must have a longer attention span. And especially when you are a believer, you must have it, you know. Um, and it's very important, okay? Uh, don't be carried away by social media and all that. Just concentrate. The one thing that guarantee you, that guarantee one key is the master key of all other keys that guarantee you to know the purpose, the plan of God for your life is intimacy with God. Intimacy with God. So that's what I call it. Intimacy with God. You see, I found out, and I'm going to use the next seven, um, seven eight, nine minutes to quickly talk about it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, when you became born again like this, like some of you just gave your life to Christ, do you know that? I, I will have demonstrated it so that I like to demonstrate to young people like this. But you can imagine what I'm trying to say. When you gave your life to Christ, Bible, according to the scripture, you have the nature of Christ. The nature, that's the nature of Christ, that's righteousness. You have the life of Christ. Zoe is called indestructible, everlasting life. 
That's what the Bible says, we are partakers of heavenly nature. You have the life of Christ. Now, you do not just have the life of Christ, you have the spirit of Christ. You see that? You have the spirit of Christ. You do not just have the spirit of Christ, okay? You have the faith of Christ. Now, you have a lot of things in common with Christ. You have the spirit of Christ. Now, if you have a bottle of water and you have a bottle of water and you mix them together, will they be mixable? They will be perfectly mixed. And you won't be able to identify which one is in cup A and which one is in cup B. You won't be able to separate them. That is what took place when you give your life to Christ. You perfectly fit into God. So the, if in the realm of the spirit, if we are to look at you, we see Christ. Do you understand? Most of the time, what denied believers in the realm of the spirit is when they utter the strange words. Do you get? You have the same life. You have the same righteousness. You now operate in the class of God. You have the nature of God. And that is why you can overcome your flesh. When you find yourself in immorality and all those challenges, you are struggling with sins, addition, that is not your real you. That is the bombardment of the kingdom of devil, the demonic oppression, infections of darkness, like our mommy described, that has been spread all over the world. That is trying to bombard your mind, depress, cause depression, oppression, and take you. It's all over social media. Social media for sheep, witchcrafting, all kinds of sorcery going on. So to bombard your heart in order to distract you from what God you know, wants to do in your life and for you to focus. So, but then I want to take note, I want you to take note of something. So when you came into Christ, let's assume that cup A and cup B, the two water. Now, the cup, cup of water A, cup of water B. One is rough, very rough. If you continue to mix the one that is clean with the one that is rough and you continue to pour, it will get to a point that the one that is rough will be sanctified by the one that is clean. That is what God did in our life. The more you stay in the place of intimacy, that secret place with God, the more God will be pouring himself into you, and then the more you'll be getting clean in operating with him. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is something to rejoice about. I tell you, the more, you see, when I stay in that place, and I will describe the place to you, it's the place I love, I keep jealously. It's called a secret place. That's why the Bible says you were made in a secret place. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, look at this scripture. And I want us to read it in the message. Ah, you will love it in the message. The message translation. So, uh, mommy, this time, they will not uh, be angry with us. We are just young and youthful like that. All right. So, um, the message, let's go to 1 Corinthians. Uh, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Lovely. I love that. Let's read it from verse 11. Uh, because of time. Let me start from verse 9. Don't you, you know, let me start from verse 9. You understand it better. Don't you realize, and I'm going to be very fast because I, have no, I don't have enough time now. Don't you realize that this is not the way you live, to live? Unjust people who don't care about God will not be joining in his kingdom. Those who use and abuse each other use and abuse sex, use and abuse the earth and everything in it. Don't, don't qualify as citizens in God's kingdom. They don't qualify as citizens in God's kingdom. He said, a number of you know from experience what I am talking about. For not so long ago, you were on that list. Since then, you have been cleaned up and given a fresh start. So that means he was saying that they were like that before. But now you have been cleaned up. God has given you a fresh start. Just like some of you gave your life to Christ today. And I believe God is giving some of you a fresh start. By Jesus. Look at it. You have been cleaned up and given a fresh start by Jesus. Our master. Your master. My master. Our Messiah. And by our God present in us. Present in us. The spirit. Can you see the way it says? Our God present in us. The spirit. Somebody say, I have the spirit of God within me. I have the spirit of God in me. You can just type it. He said, just because something is technically legal doesn't mean that it is spiritually appropriate. Can you see that? 
So that some people are doing something does not mean you can do it. Mm. That some things is 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 legal, is normal, does not mean that it's normal for a child of God. Just because something is technically legal, it does not mean that it is spiritually appropriate. If I went around doing whatever I thought I could get by with, I will be a slave to my whims. You see that? That means I will be a slave to my carnality, my flesh, my all that. You know the whole saying, first you eat to live, and then you live to eat. Well, it may be true that the body is only a temporary thing, but that's no excuse for stuffing your body with food or indulging it with sex. Can you see that? Stuffing your body with food and in, or indulging it with sex. One of the things that God will help you to tame when you live in a private place or in a secret place is appetite. Look at it. Now, it will give you mastery over appetite. That is what is called self-control. He says, stuffing your body with food or, you know, um, doing... Um, illegal set, indulging it with sex. Since the master honors you with a body, honor him with your body. Can you see that? Honor him with your body. God honored the master's body by raising it from the grave. He will treat us with the same resurrection power. Until that time, remember that your bodies are created with the same dignity, are you seeing, as the master's body. You wouldn't take the master's body off to a warehouse, would you? I should hope not. Can you see that? I should hope not. There is more to sex than mere skin on skin. So that's mm -hmm. where you know that, you know, our parents then, you know, mommy, mommy, Louis, and Co, they used to tell us that sex is a covenant, is a covenant. Now, when we saw this version, we understood it better. It is beyond skin on skin. Look at it. Says, sex as much spiritual mystery as physical heart. Can you see that? Sex is as much spiritual mystery as physical fact. As written in scripture, the two become one. Since we want to become spiritually one with the master, this is what I'm going. Mm. He's comparing sex now to intimacy. Mm. And that is where I'm going. Now, he said, since we want to become spiritually one with the master, we must not pursue the kind of sex that avoids commitment and intimacy. Mm. So the kind of sex he's talking about is extramarital sex and a premarital sex. You see that? Leaving us more lonely than ever. The kind of sex that can never become one. There is a sense in which sexual sins are different from all others. In sexual sin, we violate the sacredness of our own bodies. These bodies that were made for God, given and God model love for becoming one with another. Or didn't you realize that your body is a sacred place, the place of the Holy Ghost? And then he continued to talk. He said, don't you see that you can't live however you please, squandering what God paid such a high price for? Mm. The physical part of you is not for some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you. God owns the whole works. So mm. let people see God in and through your body in totality. He said, God owns you. Mm. Can you see that? Glory to God. God owns the whole work. Now, you know what I want to tell you? In King James Version, if you check 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, he said, whoever is joined together with God becomes one spirit with him. Those right, he said, I am one spirit with God. I am one spirit with God. For, and that is intimacy. So what happened in the place of intimacy? All right? God is the path orchestrator, is the master path orchestrator, is the master purpose designer, is the master destiny architect and is the one that will help you to find it is the pathfinder what he has what he has designed about you even your parents may not know the essence to which you should function do you understand so is the one that will reveal it to you you need to have an audience of one with god you need to have a personal relationship with god you need to have a personal prayer life with god intimacy means partnership intercourse intercourse it means interwovenness, intermingleness. It means marriage. It means fellowship. It means togetherness with God. That you are one with God, inseparable, and you are actively one with God. Not that you are dormant. You are actively one with God. And what that means is that you have the sense of God. You have the energy of God. You have the sense of God. That is the knowledge of God. You have the energy of God. So in intimacy, you have all rest, restoration, envisioning, transformation, liberation, rejuvenation. So what happens in intimacy? 
What happened? You wait on God, you pray. You talk to God as your father. In the book of Romans chapter 8, if you read, he said, we have not been given the spirit of bondage to fear, but the spirit of adoption with whom we cry, Abba, Father. So you can't cry, Abba, Father, if you are not the son. Bible says the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. All right, that we are sons of God. And then Bible says that those who are led by the spirit are sons of of God. So you are a child of God, you are a son of God. You see, you need a private life with God. You need a prayer life with God. You know, I remember in those days when I got born again, I desired to be filled with the Spirit. I will pray by myself. I will struggle. I will read my, my parents' Bible. They like to buy Bible in those days. I love to read the Bible. I had seminary in my house. Are you getting what I'm saying? A reverend canon came to me. He said, you should go to seminary. I said, it's in my house. When they came, they saw a different kind of Bible in my in my, in my room, I used to spend like three hours with God. You can imagine, as a boy of 19 years, 20 years, 30 years old, they gave me money for a, a 1,500. We call it Babariga or something, you know, to buy for myself for Christmas. I kept it to the other October, the October of the following year. That was in 2002. I went for a conference in Onicha. I bought annotated Dick Bible. Dick Bible, Dick's Bible, Dick's Bible. Some of you will know it is it's called annotated Dick's Bible. I love it. I was so happy that finally my hands, you know, I was able to lay my hands on it. It's in my house till now. October 2002. Through that Bible, I had an encounter with God. I will be studying from one passage to the other. I will be with my rolling and my, my dancing and be basking and be enjoying myself in the plan and the purpose of God for my life. So what you do in that secret place is to labor in God's word, is to talk to God, to open your eyes, to hear, to open your ears, to pray all those Pauline prayers, to look at whole New Testament, read everything and finish it in one month. Don't wait for one year. Voraciously, you have the energy, you have the passion, you have the wisdom, you have the strength. You go in there and study. Even if the word is carried away with social media, you dedicate your time. Bible says those who wait on God, they, he will renew their strength. They will want us with wings as he goes. They will run and not weary. They will walk and not faint. But don't forget, Bible says the youth will faint. But that will never be your portion in the name of Jesus. That will never be your portion in the name of Jesus. That's Romans chapter 8. Somebody is asking for, Maria is, Maria is asking for Romans. That's Romans chapter 8. You read from verse 14 to 16. When I was talking about if you are led by the Spirit, you know, you are sons of God. So you wait on God in prayer. You wait on God fasting. I started fasting early in my life. Are you getting what I'm saying? In fact, my parents will just be wondering that. You are the pastor of this house. I laid hand on my parents. Whenever there is any issue in my house, I will lay hands on them. I was just in part one of Bafemi Awolowo University. And I will lay hands on my dad. My dad beat the hell out of me because he was an educationist. He dealt with me because I'm, I, you know, I've always been his only boy. And so he did not want me to be spoiled. He dealt with me. He beat the hell out of me. What he didn't know, it wasn't because I was stubborn. But, you know, there are certain youthful exuberances and um, children issues, you know. But what he didn't know that is when he was beating the hell out of me, he was beating heaven into it. Can you imagine? He was beating heaven into it. And I submitted myself, you know, to God in prayer, in fasting, in worship. And I grew up. And God used me to wrote wonders in my family. God used me to wrote wonders, you know, organizing meetings, blessing people. I have been, um, you know, God has used me in different capacity. My time is almost off. I just have less than three minutes and I need to tidy up. So you need to give yourself to God. You need to stir up the gift of God within you. That's what God told Timothy. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. He said, I know this faith is in your mother and your grandmother. And I believe it's in you too. Stir it up. Some of you here, I have seen some people who are children of some of our, you know, mentors and um, fathers and mothers in this place, you know, stir up that gift in you. You have, some of us, we don't have the heritage of our grandmothers, grandparents knowing the Lord, you see, stir up that gift in you. Bible says, for you have not been given the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Stir it up in prayer, praying in the Holy Ghost, get baptized in the Holy Ghost, believe God for it, fast, worship. Don't joke with the assemblies of the brethren, just like the way you have come today. Immerse yourself in the flow of the things of the spirit. 
then God will now be opening your eyes. God will be opening your eyes. You'll be seeing vision, like Peter saw vision. You will hear God. The word of God will just come to you. Like Jeremiah, it came to Jeremiah. The word of God will come to you like it came to, it went to Isaiah. David was 17 when he was anointed. David was 30 when he, when he killed Goliath. Can you imagine? You are not too young. You are not too young. In fact, I can say maybe some of you, by, by revelation, I don't know your age, but you are, all right, you are already getting old. Praise God. <laughs> so you need to know the path that God has set ahead of you. And don't forget, Bible says the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter, brighter and brighter to the perfect day. And if he wants to fulfill it, in closing now, um, just like one minute, in closing, he wants to fulfill the purpose of God for your life, is going to be by faith. It's going to be by faith. And God will transform your life. It doesn't matter. I think I can see somebody saying, you know, maybe it's from a Muslim background and all that. God will transform your life. God will heal you. God will deliver you. God will set you free. God will, you know, with this understanding of how God made you and the plan that God has, God will reveal it to you. God will open your eyes. God will open your ears. And your life will never remain the same again in the name of Jesus. Now, if you are just joining us before I pray, I want you to just say after me, um, if you have, you need to, you rededicate your life to Christ. Let me first pray for you first and foremost. Um, if you are yet to give your life to Christ, you can also, you know, be part of it. All right. Just say after me, say, Father, I love you. I believe with, with my heart. I believe you with my heart. I confess you with my mouth that you died and resurrected for me. My names are written in the book of life. In the name of Jesus, my sins are forgiven. I am rededicated unto you. I am saved in the name of Jesus. I am washed by the blood of Jesus. I have the life of God in me now. As from today, be my Lord and my Savior. Say, Holy Spirit, I receive you into my heart. I am imparted. I am blessed. I am filled. I am baptized with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, everlasting Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Once again, I want to thank mommy. I want to thank daddy, um, probably in absentia. And I want to tell all our mentors that are here, that they are the you and everybody. Thank you for uh, having me. I'm so delighted. I'm sure you have been blessed. All right. I love feedback a lot. So you can let me know if you have been blessed. If you can follow and listen again and again. Also, the, the message that our mother preached. I'm so sure that God, through that message, will start redirecting your path. And then you start knowing that there is more to you than you know of yourself in Christ. And then you align yourself. God bless you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Wow. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Can we just clap our hands together for Jesus? This is, this is awesome. This is wonderful. God bless you so much, sir. Oh, God. So uh, we have many people joining us on YouTube. And many people join on Facebook. So I was going there. I, I went there to check the feedbacks. And I tell you, the feedbacks has been awesome. So many some people were saying, you are speaking my mind. You are speaking to me, sir. This is a mystery revealed to me. This, this message goes beyond the 154 people online here. We, are, we have many people watching on YouTube. We have many people watching on Facebook. And their lives have been impacted. Thank you so much for this message. God bless you. God bless you so much. You've said, you said you said one thing, but you said a lot of things. That's it. That's just it. Just one thing. Intimacy with God, but you said a lot of things. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sure the grace of God over your life. God bless you. I will welcome on me shortly, but I want us to, if you have been blessed, which I know, I have no doubt in my spirit, can we pray for the man of God? He he experience and uh, uh, some of us, just like he said, some of us have been going and coming. We are picking our life, drop it for Jesus, pick it up again. But at the time he picked it up, that is the message he has given us today to pick it up once and believe. He said so many things. It's like we built. I have one spirit with God. You're born again. You have the nature of God. You are that mommy has said you have God's agenda. Now you are God's agenda, and he just telling us. I am, this is what God 
has made us to be. So let's pray that the Lord will bless him. The Lord will expand his coast. The Lord will expand the scope of his ministry in the name of Jesus. Yes, he started young. It will not fail in the name of Jesus. His strength will not faint in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will continually increase his capacity in the name of Jesus. He said he loved the secret place. He will not, de- he will not run away from that secret place in the name of just the place where he receives strength, where he receives power, it will, it will not become boring to him. It will not become a routine that I can let me do something else in the name of Jesus. The Lord will continually load him on his food, fulfilling God's purpose, fulfilling God's mind in the mighty name of Jesus. As he has declared to our lives today that our visions are lifted, our eyes are lifted. He has told us how we, be, how we can be lifted. The Lord will lift him. In the name of Jesus, the church, communion, Christian center, will be blessed. We grow in leaps and bands. In the name of Jesus, life channel ministry will grow in leaps and bands. In the name of Jesus, more grace, more helpers of destiny, more action. In the name of Jesus, thank you, everlasting Father. We give all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Let me let me welcome mommy shortly. Let me just welcome mommy shortly. Mommy, over to you. Hallelujah. Let's laugh for Jesus. It has been so awesome. God is great. God is good. God is wonderful. We are so happy. I'm so blessed. Personally, I'm blessed. You brought us into that uh, secret place. Mm. You open our eyes to what the word really means. Yeah. And when you were reading the Bible, it was so interesting. It was so beautiful. And you are pointing our attention to our God. Yeah. And I know you challenge all the singles in the house to go back to God. I mean, to read the word, to meditate in the word, mm. to hear the word. Mm. I can see it all over you. And we are grateful for this powerful message. We are so happy to have you, sir. Our big brother in the Lord. Mm. <laughs> and you are following yourself. <laughs> I know we are all following your step. We are your children. <laughs> more anointing, Amen. more grace. Yeah. We are happy. You really bless us today. We are loaded. And I yeah. believe we will go back into that secret place in Jesus' Amen. name. We don't want to see. We want to see the thing you saw. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the Lord will teach us more in Jesus. We are very Amen. grateful. We are happy to have you, sir. I'm happy. I'm so happy. We are so happy tonight. God will strengthen you. More grace, more anointing. We can call you anytime again. No? So mm. be free. We know you have answered us when we call. God bless you, sir. More grace. Amen. And just to everyone of oh, our sister and everybody at home. Thank you Amen. and God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Thank you so much sir. We really, we really thank God for your life. Amen. Thank you. Wow. Yes, something dropped in my mind as uh, mommy was speaking. You know, the man of God said that um, while he was growing up, he spent some considerable length of time in the secret place, just rolling. I like that word. It just rolling, just rolling. And I want, and the word came to me that, see, if you are spending time now and it looks as if you're not seeing, he's like, he, he, most of us are in a hurry. We, we have seen people manifest and we also want to manifest. Just calm down. Be in yeah. keep moving. Just keep rolling. Let them pour in onto you. I tell you, your moment of manifestation is coming. Your time that you yeah. on display is coming. So don't be tired. I'm encouraging someone today. Don't be tired. I've been reading, I've been reading you know, three hours. Me too, I read all days. I don't have anything to show now. Don't worry. Just keep staying that presence when this come when the when you are fully loaded i tell you just one small thing like this that you would do and then we see that ah so God is preparing me all this way and that god is preparing so many of us as well we are singles we are not just singles waiting to be married though no 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 we are not just waiting to be married so that when we marry we just settle down like sediment no, no, no we are on fire for god so by the time we marry like this one day wow. So our two, Mike Avashita, we are chasing 10,000 in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Sir. We are privileged to have you. Hope to see you again, like Mommy has said. Hope to see you again. God bless you. Thank you so much, our regards to the church. God bless you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Are you excited in the house? I'm, 
I don't know. I'm just so excited. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the, the Lord has blessed me. See my note. Oh. Uh, see my note. Oh. <laughs> writing. So don't say you are listening passive. If you have not written anything, I implore you, just go back after we are done. Go to YouTube. Go and watch it again. Go and listen again. Yeah. Some of us are asking for Bible passages that we missed. Go back. Go and listen to the message again. From the short message that mommy gave and this message completed. And the Lord will do you good. More testimonies are coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Mommy, thank you for this vision. We are, we are really being blessed. We are really being transformed. That is just the truth of the matter. Thank you so much. All right. Our time goes on now. We are going to uh, pray on the message. Brother Bobade Samuel We take us further praying on this message. I know we pray, but we need to pray more. It's, it's intimacy. It's, that's it. We don't get tired of it. Just keep, you know, getting into the flow, getting into the spirit. And we call our brother Boba Day for the um, for prayer on the message. Praise God. Please pray. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we hear me, sir? Yes, a, loud, a little loud, please. All right. Praise Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. It's a privilege to I'm so honored to be in the house. Pastor Tokwe, we want to appreciate you so greatly. We have had a lot from your ministration today. And one of the things that I got from this ministration is that we, our, our actual image is the image of God. Our actual image, the original configuration of our life is the image of God. Whatsoever we are living in now, it's just a borrowed image. And we have a whole lot of people today that are living their life and will die in the borrowed image. Many have lived and have died in the borrowed image and have not come to the existence of the original image, which is the image of God. And that is what our prayer focus will be on today. I used to crack a joke with my friends. We used to say some people are running part-time with Jesus. We used to say some people are doing daily part-time some people will stand learning. And this is the reality of life over so many Christians today, over so many creation of God today. Many people are, they will, be, they, they will give their life today and tomorrow they will, take, they will take it back again. But we need to pray now that we will, from now henceforth begin to live in the reality of the image from the foundation of the heart. From now henceforth, we will continue to live in the direct image, in the exact image which God has made for us from the plan in the initial, from the architectural design of our life before we, before we were made, that we will continue to live in that image. Is there somebody praying in that house today? Can you say, Father, return me to the direct image of what I am already, what, what I'm meant to live from the foundation of the heart. Return me to the image of you, Jesus. Return me to the image of you, Jesus. He said, looking not to Jesus, the halter and the finisher of our faith. When we look up to him, we'll look like him. When we look up to him, we'll be like him. Can we begin to pray that God in his mercy will help us to make our gaze focused on him solely. We'll make our eyes glued up to him permanently. That whatsoever will take us away from that image, it will move it away from us. In the name of Jesus, nothing will shake us. Nothing will shake our focus. In the name of Jesus, our eyes are fixed on him. In the name of Jesus, our eyes are fixed on him. In the name of Jesus, our eyes are glued up to him. In the name of Jesus, nothing will, nothing will drift us from that image. Nothing will drift us from that image. And can we pray that whatsoever that does not look like the plan of God in our lives, ah, that the Lord in his message should take it out of our lives. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever that does not look like your image in my life, whatsoever tree you have not planted and is growing in my life and is feeding on me, it is a pest. 
Can we tell God, Lord, take them out of my life today. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatsoever tree you have not planted, uproot them now. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever plant you have not planted, uproot them now. In the name of Jesus, I live for you, Jesus. I live for you, Jesus. My life is all for you. Anything that is not of you in my life, Today, remove them in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Naman Shaki, Pambre, Sia Labadado, Lake, Somano Sasia, Catabra, everything that is none of you in my life. Today, take them out in the name of Jesus. Every plant that is none of you, every plant that does not look like you in my life. Uproot them now in the name of Jesus. Uproot them now in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to be like you, Jesus. I want to look like you. I want to live like you. I want to die for you. I want to live for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I want to be like you. I want to look like you in the name of Jesus. I want to be the perfect image of you. I want to be that image that you have designed from the foundation of the heart. I want to be that exact image that everyone in the world is longing to be like in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone wants to be like you. Everyone wants to know you. Holy Spirit, help me to live in that consciousness in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus, mighty name we are afraid. I've come to understand something that one of the things that makes a man continue to live with the consciousness of the image is when the consciousness of eternity is in the mind of that man. When you know where you are going, when you know the idea of your destination, it will help you to forge ahead in that journey. When you know the reward at the end of the journey, it will help you to move on with the journey. And that is what we'll be, what we'll be addressing the next prayer point. That God in his mercy will help us to have that eternity in view. God in his mercy will help us to have our focus on the hand. Apostle Paul said, I'm pressing forward towards the mark. It means that he has, he has an idea of something at the end of that journey. He has an idea of something at the end. Of, that is why when they put him in prison, he's not, he's not bothered. That is why when they are beating him, he's not bothered. When they want to behead him, he just kept his head like that. Because he knew that there is something at the end of this journey. There is something at the end of this tunnel. There is, there is a glory after it. Jesus Christ knew that after he dies for the sin of man, he is going to be with his father. That the Lord in his mercy will help us to have that eternity in view. We help us to have the knowledge of what our reward will be at the end of it. Can we pray that God will help our focus to be on eternity? We help our focus to be on him alone. In the name of Jesus. My eyes will not drift from you, Jesus. My eyes will focus on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will look unto you till the end. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Help me not to look at you. Help me not to look on you. Help me not to stay focused on you. In the name of Jesus. The apostles, when they wanted to kill them, they were still choosing how to die. They were saying, don't kill me like you, like the way you cross, the way you crucify Jesus. Crucify me in, multi in the multiplication sign. Some said, crucify me upside down. Because they knew that there is something after the crucifixion. There is something after the hanging. There is something after the beheading. There is something after the skinning of life. There is something after the throwing inside, inside hot, hot fire. There is something after putting inside hot oil. Hey, Father, help me. Help me to stay focused to that reward that you will give me at the end of age. In the name of Jesus. Nothing in this world will appeal to me. Nothing in this world will take me outside your focus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help me to stay focused. Help me to stay in you. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer I will be praying that help me not to fail you. In the name of Jesus. Either you are a father, either you are a mother, either you are a single, at any whatsoever level you are, there is every probability that after the long walk, God is interested more in your life than the walk. After all these works that I am doing, after all these works that our mommy, our mommy and daddies are telling us 
focus on God, be purposeful, be this. After everything, help me to stay till the end. Help me to reign with you. Help me to stay to the end. In the name of Jesus Christ, help me to reign with you. In the name of Jesus. The beauty of everything is that at the end, we shout hallelujah together. The beauty of everything is that when Jesus comes, all of us will wear white and we'll be singing hallelujah together. Yes, sir. It will be very hazardous if at the end of that, at the end of all the running around, all the assignment that we are doing, we still find someone, someone that is not there with us to reign. Can we pray that, Father, after all my assignment in this world, help me to reign with you. I want to reign with you in the name of Jesus. I want to reign with you. Whatsoever will make me not reign, drag them out of my life. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever will make me not be with you at the end, Holy Spirit, take them out of my life. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We exalt you. For you love us so much. This is a complete meal. Complete meal from the tune of grace. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. It is from the beginning of our salvation. I've been the end, which is eternity and our mind. Because your servant said, you never start a thing that you have not finished. Thank you, Father, because you will take us through. Lord, we give you praise. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Brother Bobade. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you. I want to say something that all of us, as part of action points from these messages, from this ministration from today, is to draw out prayer points, something you want to and study from all that you've had. You've had some things that is like, is it, are you, is it true? Get into the same place and study it out and pray these prayers yourself. Pray some more. In, in, you get more intimate with him. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Our God is good. Hallelujah. Are you enjoying God? Are you enjoying God? Hey. Jesus, hallelujah. This God is good. Let me see your hand. Let me see. We are on video. Just, just appreciate God. Just give God praise for what we have, what He has done so far. It's just so far. So far. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just keep waving so that they can see those on YouTube. You can see we are in God. Hallelujah. And you enjoy just wave where you are to though we can see you'll be just wave to God. As many people as on video, just with hallelujah, that we are just giving glory to God for many things. Lives been changed, lives been transformed. Our eyes are open, our lives have been transformed. We have been healed, we have been saved. We have come to a consciousness of who we are in Christ by just coming today. Wow, this is a good time for a meeting. Hallelujah, amen, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Yes, testimony is already flowing in. Keep it coming, keep it coming. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Shortly, going to um, just a short period of time, we welcome our dear sister, Sister Priscilla, to take us in the um, short questions and answer. No, it's just very short, um, say 15, 20 minutes. So if you have questions, raise your hand now. We're not wasting time. We're not waiting here for after thoughts. If you have questions you want to ask, Raise your hand now as I welcome our sister Priscilla to anchor the question and answers. Now, you're welcome, ma. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for that um, very powerful and insi insightful messages from our mommy and from our uncle. God bless you, sir. So as you, if you have questions, Anything bothering your mind, can kindly chat. Just, you know, write your question in the chat room so that we can address your questions. Hallelujah. So anybody with questions, you know, something troubling your mind, anything, please let's begin. To, okay, there, there is a question here. 
and I would want our daddy, daddy, Yemi, I they called you to answer our question. We actually have um, five different um, people that will answer our questions. Our mommies, mommy Gloria Bamiloye, mommy Remy Bangboje, mommy Busayo Asikia, daddy Yemi Adekwoju, and brother Damilola Mike Bamiloye is going to be addressing our questions for us. I'll be starting from our daddy, daddy Yemi Adekwoju, to be answering this question for us. And the question goes this way. I cannot find any deliverance prayer center around the place I live in USA. I need a spiritual help urgently. Please tell me if you know. Thanks. It's just, the person is just, I, I think mommy should add, add, answer the question for us, my mommy. Gloria Bamiloye, if you know any points, any prayer centers in USA, I think that's, that's um, the person's question. Mommy, your mic is um is muted, ma. Okay, can you hear me? We can hear you, ma. Yes, I want the person to because as I, I presently I can't tell you to go to somewhere for deliverance, but from what we have been doing in this program, if she has been here from the beginning, even by now you should be receiving your deliverance now. So don't link up, don't, don't, don't believe in this. God is everywhere. And God gathered us together in this program to receive our deliverance, salvation, healing. So don't believe until you get to somebody or, or until you get to somewhere before you receive your deliverance. What you need is to hold on to your faith. And Jesus is the one that will deliver you, not man. So even if you go to any man, if you don't have your faith in Jesus, it will never be possible. Nobody can deliver you but Jesus. So if wherever you find yourself as you are here with us, you know, listening to the word of God, by now something should be happening to you now. So I don't know where, I don't, I don't want to point, I don't want to tell you to go somewhere and receive deliverance. Believe Jesus Christ and you shall be delivered. Hold on to that faith and your deliverance will come. So even from here now, as we are talking to you now, you should receive your deliverance on this mountain because we are all on the mountain now with Jesus Christ. I think that's what I will say. I don't know if any other fathers have something to add to what I've said, I but that is the truth. Jesus Christ is the one you should, be, you should look for. Seek after Jesus, not unto any man of God or any church or anywhere. Believe Jesus Christ that we have been preaching to you since the beginning the beginning of this program, and you will receive your deliverance. That they are you. Do you want to add to that? Maybe you have something to tell that sister. I think you have, you have said uh, that the most important thing is what you have said, man. It is Jesus that can deliver. And it's the word of God. From what you've been listening to, intimacy, reading the word of God in prayer, you can receive your deliverance. Because the Bible says, upon Mount Zion, yes, can be deliverance. So I believe with what I've been had and from the word of God. The people that we do the deliverance, they are going to use the word of God for you. There's nothing, there's nothing else they are going to use the word of God for prayer. We just want to ask mom that don't have, don't have your faith until that, until I go to a particular place to get my deliverance. We have been we took out the revelation we saw tonight of our intimacy of who we are in Christ. If we go in this strength, there's nothing that can hinder us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Daddy, for that um, beautiful answer. Thank you, Mommy. God bless you, Ma. So I'll uh, be calling those. I think some people have raised up their hands to, you know, ask questions. But as um, I, I'll be calling on Olori Ade Adiola to answer, to ask a question. Um, please, um, our host, kindly, you know, pin her down so that she can ask her question. But before that, somebody was asking, 
that he just stumbled on this program. When do we do the program? We do the program, and we always do the program last week in every month, last Sunday of every month. Like the next month in May, we'll be having another program, which is the last Sunday of May. So you are lucky that you are here. We also have you know, group, we have group for the single sister, which is the TLHM group, the Lot and Medi group. We have group for the single brothers, sending you the, the person to chat with so that you can, you know, connect to the group. So, but I would want Sister Adiola to ask a question if she has um, any question. I think our host, is there anybody like that? She, she is not on. Okay, I'll just be moving to the next question on our chat room. Um, and that is, um, the person asked, in a situation where due to life circumstances, you found yourself in a place you never imagined to be as a single and as a Christian, who have the mind to walk in God's way? And the more you try to withdraw your step, the more you find yourself in so deep in such a life. I think the person is trying to ask about, you know, a life of maybe a life that she's, she or she is not supposed to be living. And she's finding herself deep into it in that life. And she wants to withdraw from it. So I would want our mommy, mommy Bam, budget to ask answer that question. What is the way out? I don't know if our mommy is here. Mm -hmm. Mommy Remy Bang budget. What is the way out? Um, the person is finding herself or himself in a scene that he wants to, you know, remove himself from, but he can't just remove himself from the scene. What can the person do, ma? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah. There, there is no other way to get yourself detached from the entanglement of the world than to keep studying the world. Than to keep studying the world. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 1, blessed is he that do not sit with the scornful, with the sinners. Now that you are born again, now that you have activated your, your original being. Now that you know that you are in the lineage of Christ. Now that you know where you are coming from. According to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. You are now seated in heavenly places with Christ. The next thing is to keep growing. Studying the word. It is the word of God that will be flushing out all those evil manipulations. The place where you are finding yourself. It is the manipulation of the devil. Devil know how to orchestrate evil around you. But the more you feed, and I, I, I believe you heard that message, the more you feed yourself with the word, the more the power of God bombards you. The more you are revived because the word of God is God himself. You are immunizing your system with the word. And as you are doing that, you will have the enlightenment, your eyes will be open, and you will be overcoming the manipulations of the devil. You will be speaking against the word of God. The Bible said they will hear my voice and they will flee. Not because you are special, but because God is in you, and you have the word of God coming out from your mouth. And as you are doing that, as you are growing, you will hate sin. The Bible said in the first book of John, first John. He that is born of God does not sin. You will hate sin. You continue to pull away sin, I mean, push away sin from your life. But the, the, the most important thing is to dwell in the world, romance with the world, sing all the time. Hear messages, godly messages, messages that will inspire you and look and, and think of heaven. The more you do that, the more you are changing your mindset, the more you are growing. That is the only way out. That is the only way. Desire it. Pray it. Get yourself engaged with the Bible and with other men of God. I mean, men of God that will point your attention to heaven and God will see you through. 
God will overhaul you and you will be in the image of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Mommy, for that um, answer. God bless you, Ma. Um, the next question uh, I would be asking, we'll be going to our Mommy, 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 uh, Mommy Busayo Asikia. She's, uh, the question is, while sharing the gospel with a stranger, if you are not getting a leading in your spirit, how do you control the conversation with the person? Do you just pray for them and you move on? The person is, you know, talking about um, um, when you are not getting um, a permission in your spirit to do something, maybe talking to a stranger about Christ or doing something generally. What do you do? Uh, <clears throat> praise the Lord. The Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Once you are sure that it's the Holy Spirit that is not allowing you to, um, you know, continue in a discussion, it's better you stop and you ask the same Holy Spirit, you know, who is your teacher to tell you what to do. Anything that anybody, anytime anybody is saying something about the Holy Spirit, we don't know, we cannot say otherwise because uh, the Bible says the Holy Spirit that will teach you all things. So when you say <clears throat> Holy Spirit is asking you, you know, if you are not having any conviction to continue, then you have to stop and ask the Holy Spirit to tell you what to do or what to say or whether to continue praying for that person. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Mommy. I appreciate that. Um, this question is also a very spectacular question. I want our mommy to, mommy Gloria Bamiloye to address the question. The person is a Muslim convert. She said she's, a, she's, she's from a Muslim background, but she got converted. And she said it has not been easy at all. I have been persecuted greatly, especially from my father, who is a Muslim fanatic and is still bent on, is yet to accept me that I'm now of Christ Jesus and nothing will change that. All I need is a prayer of intercession. I desire uh, that my father, we have an encounter with Jesus Christ as Saul did um, on his way to Damascus. And I want God to settle my marital life. Um, and I really need your help as the word of God says that the Lord is with me and those that assist me. Please, I'm sorry for the long write-up. I really do need help and major testimonies. So she's a, she's a Muslim convert and she, she's asking okay. how, she, God can, how she can be helped by God, especially with a father who is not, you know, encouraging her to, to, to have a relationship with Christ now. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, ma, we can hear you, ma. Okay. I want to read this, this um, verse for that sister or a brother. I don't know. But that is Jude chapter two, chapter one. Jude chapter one, verse, verse three. He says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I want him, I want him or her to note that word, earnestly contend. You see, the faith in Christ is not, uh, is not what you can use your strength to keep or to, or to say I can walk. But I would say you have some roles to play. That is not that we will not be intimidated, not that we will not be persecuted, but the Bible says we should earnestly contend, that is, struggle, fight for that faith. You have given your life to Jesus Christ. Now you are the one that will keep that faith so that nothing will take it away from you. That's why Muslim, not even we stand, even any, whoever give his life to Jesus Christ, we, we, are, we face persecution. But why your own is different is because, you know, you are from another background, which is the other side. 
But I'm telling you, if you can contend for that faith you have received, you will see victory coming your way. That's your father you are talking about, will be saved. Your family will know the Lord Jesus Christ, but you are the one that will determine it. So you need to fight it through. You need to, and what is the fight? What is the, what is the, I mean, what is, what are you supposed to do? That is remain in that faith. Don't let anything take you away from that faith. Be it persecution or what, or temptation or whatever that, they will rise against you. Bible has already said that because you are moving away from darkness, but they can never overcome. So what are you going to do now? Is that in that same chapter, verse 20 says, but ye beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, the faith you have received in Christ, build yourself. And those are the things we've heard today. See the message that has been given, your intimacy with God, your secret place, build yourself on that Hold, and that faith you have received in Christ Jesus Christ. He said, keep yourself in the love of God. The love Christ has given you, keep yourself in that love, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So I will advise you, sister or brother, keep that faith, don't let it drop. Fight for it, contend, set me, determine to keep, fight for that faith. Be faithful to God, be committed to what you have received. You have received life. And I'm telling you, once you embrace it and you keep it with all your life, others are coming to join you. And whatever you are passing through, Jesus, he sees all this. He sees seeing it. And I'm telling you, the more you trust God, the more you rest in that faith, he will see you through. You will see, you will see smile, you will see praise God, you will see what, you will see, he will see take you beyond that level. But for now, you have to face the persecution. Believers face this in the Bible and they overcome. So you are going to overcome. Your marital life, everything is just the message you've had. Everything has been planned by God. You be committed to God. Embrace him. Enjoy your intimacy with him. And he will settle you at the appointed time. But the most important thing you will do now is hold on to that faith. Strive, contend, earnestly contend for it. Keep it with all your life. Don't let anything take it away from you and you will overcome. God bless you. Please unmute yourself, ma'am. Is that Priscilla? Oh, sorry, thank you. Yes, thank you, ma, for that question. And may God help us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I have two questions, you know, in one, one from YouTube. And another one, but it's, it's linked up together. The person said that I have been praying to know my calling on earth. And last Sunday, I had a dream that I am called to witness God to God's people, God's work to his people so that they can be saved. So please, with basics, help me because I am shy. And another person was asking a question of, he is not fulfilled and he wants to change his environment. Maybe it's because of the environment he is that is not making him to be fulfilled. What can he do? So um, I want our daddy, daddy Mike, daddy Jeremy Adekwaju to answer the question for us. Um, the person is asking about fulfillment and how to fulfill his purpose on earth. I think the network is not currently offline now. We'll be joining us shortly. Okay, I would want our mommy, mommy, so mommy, mommy, mommy Remy Bang Budget to answer the question for us now. Please unmute yourself, mommy Remy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When it comes to working for God, when it comes to fulfillment, it comes from intimacy with Christ. It comes from fellowshipping with Christ, from personal discussion. You will hear him. And when God is speaking, he will make it easy for you. You will see whatever God wants you to do, it will be convenient for you. It will be difficult for others, but God will empower you and make it convenient. You will struggle with it. And I 
as you are doing it, you will be fulfilled. The, our problem is the starting point. How do I know? How do I start? For example, the person that is talking about witnessing, ordinary posting, God bless you, you are witnessing. As you are moving to your place of work, and you just say, God bless you, Jesus loves you, Jesus is coming back to take his people, you have witnessed under one minute. It is now left for the Holy Spirit to keep on reminding that person. But as you are leaving your house early in the morning, in the middle of night, late at night, always pray for baptism of Holy Spirit so that you can be bold to take steps. That is it. That is what Satan always used to make us afraid. Satan will discourage us, but you just keep on praying, studying the word of God, and, and be open at it. God will be putting his instruction. Maybe you are in the bus, and God will just say, oh, yeah, open your mouth, witness to these people. Initially, your body wants to do like this, but as you keep on, as you keep on praying, Lord, help me. I want to open my mouth. Please fill my mouth. Before you know it, in the next two minutes, you'll be preaching. And the more you do it, the more you enjoy it, the more you will be fulfilled, the more you will see the, uh, the Spirit of God flowing, doing it himself. Now, this is the disadvantage, I mean, the, the, the devil's attack. The more you are doing it, devil will attack with the spirit of pride. If God wants to encourage you, maybe miracle happen instantly. You pray for a sick person and miracle happen. Devil will want to give you pride. It will ah, I found pride. That is why you should pray more and fight the spirit of pride. That is why you should be more humble. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, mommy, for that answer. God bless you, ma. Um, another question will be going to our mommy, mommy Misayo Asikia. The person is asking a question on marriage. And the person is asking a question. Um, any advice for a believer who is convinced that marriage is part of God's will for him? He is doing everything according to God's will, keeping himself busy in church. But yet, God's promise, promise of a kingdom marriage has still not yet been manifested. What advice do you have, please? And a lot of questions of marriage is, in our, is on our page because we are single ladies, single brothers, you know, that's the next step in line for us. So, mommy, I want you to elaborate more on anything you know about marriage so that it can cover all questions that has been asked on marriage, ma. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to say that in Psalm 37, from verse 1, the Bible says, we should delight ourselves in the Lord. We should not be anxious. Don't be anxious about people that are making it, and they are making it in an ungodly way. For instance, there are so many youth singles that, you know, always wear wrong dress. They, wear, they dress wrongly. They dress in an ungodly way. They copy the world system. They feel that, especially ladies, Sisters, they feel that it is by the, the addressing that God will, you know, that they will meet their own husband. No, it is as they lead, they continue to lead correctly with the Lord. They walk with the Lord. They have intimate relationship with the Lord. They are serving him with gladness that God, you know, God visits them. And I want to say that for every man, there is a woman because God always, he said, I, when he created the male, he also made the male, I mean, the female. So for every male, there is a female. Praise God. He said he, 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 he blessed them. It was the male and the female that he blessed. So there is, for every woman, for every man, there is a male. There is a male. For every woman, every sister, there is a male. There is a man. And for every brother, there is a, 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 a female. Praise God. Now, I want to say that the most, um, unfortunately, in our generation, many brothers and many people say they are born again, but they are born again. They do they not, not know again. the Lord. They are not, hello? They have not grown. 
you know, they have not grown to the point of living a sinful life, living sinful habits, and growing to hear God. If you have not departed from sin and worldly ways, there is no way God can be your friend to the point of talking to you about marriage. So if you are just growing in the Lord, I want you to leave the issue of marriage and focus on your growth with the Lord. Growth with the Holy Spirit. Growth in hearing God say, my sheep know me and they hear my voice. They will not listen to the voice of strangers. Be a friend of God. When you are a friend of God, the Bible says, which of you, eh, that you, when your, 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 your children ask you for bread, that you will give them a stone. If many of you, if you do, if you, many of you that are earthly fathers, if you know how to give good, good gifts to your children, how much more your father, which is in heaven. So you must have a relationship with, your, with God, serve him with gladness, enjoy your work with him. I remember one of our sisters, you know, she lived with us for seven years. She was 35 at that time, and, and, and she, had, she was not yet married. She waited on God, she believed God, she trusted God, and one day, a, a, a brother so-called came to the office and then uh, said, proposed to her. And you know, he said, okay, sit down, brother. She offered him uh, malt, a bottle of malt and biscuits. And this brother finished the malt and biscuit in one minute. So she said, eh? So this one, ah, this one is an hungry man. And she started asking him questions. What is the purpose of marriage? This man did not know the purpose, purpose of marriage. What are the, why, why, why do you, why, as you have been growing in the law, what has God been telling you? Why do you attend Bible study? So I said, he not like attending Bible study. He only likes reading Christian literature. Ah, so at the end of the day, our sister was able to tell him the purpose of marriage. Now, if she had not grown in the Lord, she would have fallen for such a, a person. And by now, she would be crying. So many people marry, um, you know, ungodly people, people that are not matured in the Lord because they are in a hurry. Thank God, two years later, she got married. And up to now, in fact, the brother, she was serving God with the whole of her heart. The brother came to the ministry to join us. And they got married two years later at 37. So I want to tell you, no matter how old you are, keep serving the Lord. Love the Lord. Grow in the Lord. Study the word of God and be diligent in the service of God. I pray that when the right time comes, when you have grown in the Lord, when you have grown to be hearing God, God will tell you the right man. As God normally speaks, at you speak to your father, your natural father. That's the way your heavenly father will talk to you. I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sister Priscilla, you didn't unmute yourself. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And they'll say, we, let's take the last question now, please. Oh, okay. The last question will be going to our daddy, Daddy Yemi Adekoju. The person is asking on, um, the question is, how can he overcome pornography and fornication? And what Bible versus, what is the Bible saying versus what can I give him? I hope, or what can I do? Please, I need your advice. Thank you. Daddy, is Daddy here already? Uh, Daddy is yet to be back. Okay, so um, I, I, I mommy, know. Gloria, Bamiloyema, our is mommy. Okay, uh, concerning that person who's asking for how to overcome pornography, I think, is that not the question? Yes, ma. Uh -huh. From what the Lord has told us today, from the message, you need to take care of your spirit. Feed your, if you are a child of God, you have been born again. You need to grow in the Lord. You know, the man of God gave us an example of uh, um, we coming into the Lord's presence, having intimacy with God. If you release your heart to God, you know, having time for God, reading the word of God, praying. The power of God will reduce all these lustful spirits from your heart. Amen. You will be strong against all this evil, all, all this loss that is going on in the world today. So you need strength in your spirit. You need to build yourself in the Lord to resist 
all the temptation that is going on around the world today, they are everywhere. But if you are a child of God, you soak yourself in the world, you have time with God, he will strengthen you. There's no other culture, no, but you, see, it's because of what you give yourself to. If you don't have time for God, you have time for something else. So if you, feed, if you have time to feed your body three times a day, separate time for God. Let God deal with those evils, I mean, all those lustful spirits. Let God cleanse you. Let God purify you. Then you'll be able to resist all the temptations around you. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Then I, I saw a question where a lady was asking about jewelries and so on and so forth. Now, we are not against using jewelries, but God, the Bible talks about more dressing in everything you do. When you dress, dress, dress as a child of God, don't expose yourself, don't lure people away into sin as a result of your careless dressing. These people are, many things, girls and people are wearing today, they are not according to the will of God. When you dress and you expose all what God has given you to keep for your husband, then you are tempting people, you sin against God. And as a child of God, dress well. Let God be glorified in your body. That body is not yours, it belongs to God. Some will wear skates, you'll be looking at everything they are supposed to cover. You will see all their cleverage, everything coming out. And they are children of God and they are going to church and they are singing in the church and they are serving God. The Holy Spirit should have told you inside that you should, if, I, if you open your heart to God very well, you will know how best to dress. Some things may be good for others, but it may not be good for you. And even if you are using jewelry and water, you know everything is more dressed. The Bible has, I mean, revealed to us. Dress moderately. Let God be glorified. Don't lure people into sin because of what to put on. Dress to the glory of God. That's what the Bible is talking about. You can't say you are a child of God, you carry the Bible and you dress like the world, like, like this. You know, you know, you know the story of Jezebel in the Bible. Go and read about Jezebel. Some people are, the, the Bible calls it the attire of the harlots. If you put on things that does not glorify you, you are glorifying the devil. You are, you are preaching, the, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are bringing comfort to the devil. Even though you carry the Bible, you, you are speaking in tongues. But what you put on is against you. If the Holy Ghost is in you, really, really, if like it's so supposed to have correct way, don't do this, you are a child of God. So what you are saying, we are not against for the things people are using today, but what the Bible tells us is that we should dress moderately. Dress to the glory of God. If you are using your hearing, use it moderately. If you are putting on dress, putting on things that will glorify God. Don't expose what you are supposed to cover. Let God be glorified in your life. He said in your body. Because that body belongs to Jesus Christ. And don't forget, all these things, they are just for now. Don't, because of all these things, you know, um, uh, miss your eternity in Christ Jesus. Don't push people to sin because of your dress. Don't lure brothers into sin. Let people see you and let them glorify God in your life. Put on things that will glorify God. Cover your everything that you need to cover. Don't expose your body. To the world today now, when they say if you have it, then flaunt it. Don't flaunt it. Don't ask, don't 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 back the devil and the host of darkness. Don't back them or don't join them, even though you call yourself a child of God. If you're a child of God, let people see the glory of God on your life. That's what we are saying. God bless you. I think if the question is has been has been done. I mean, Brother, are we still on or we should stop? Thank you so much, mommy, for that response. God bless you, ma. Okay, I think we've come to the end of our question and answer because of our time. Um, we have the CLHM group and the, the Overcomers group have sent the numbers which you can you know, send a WhatsApp message to. For the brothers, the Overcomers have sent the numbers you can send a WhatsApp message to. And for the sisters, the Lord and maidens have sent the numbers you can send a WhatsApp message to if you want to join any of this group. God bless you. So I'll be handing over to our brother to take over the event.
And Moose, brother Taye, we can hear you. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sister Priscilla. Session and for giving us the information to join the Lord's hand meeting and the Overcomers group. I told us initially at the start of the program that the Lord's hand meeting, that's the sisters group, and then the Overcomers, that's the brothers group. They are trained and they are, they are the offspring of the vision carrier. The vision carriers uh, international is um, the women that says so for drama ministries worldwide right now so those are they if you can join from all over the world you can check the contact on the on the group i've also posted it on whatsapp and on, on facebook and on youtube so you can see the contacts if you want to join any of this group and from this group you'll be getting information about god you'll be getting out to you know bible studies there there are times for question and answers there are times for prayers as time for studies it's just to help you grow in your intimacy with god the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Now, if you've not answered your question, um, uh, there will be another session next month. Just make sure you, you join us and the Lord will, uh, will, will bless you again and again. I also see that many of our questions have been answered, even from the answers that were given from, from all our daddies. I want to appreciate our daddy, Daddy Yemi Adepoju. Thank you so much for coming. Our mommy, mommy Remy Bangoje, thank you so much for those insights. And their mommy, Busai Asika, we really appreciate you for those insightful words and answers. Our mommy, Gloria, God bless you, ma, for the insight we've received. Amen and amen. Moving forward, we're taking the prophetic declaration, and that will bring us also to the end of it. So we'll just give one few announcement, and then we take, maybe I should just take the few announcement now, that the, the, by, by God's grace tomorrow, we will be starting the online basic course, in, and that's on Zoom. And also, by God's grace, in May, we will be having the physical class start. So we wrote the flyers immediately after the uh, prophetic declaration. So let's welcome our mommy, Mami Remi Bangboje, for the prophetic declaration. Hey. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank mommy, you. God bless you for, for giving me another opportunity. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. God bless you, man. So we are taking this prophetic declaration from the book of Psalm 18, verse 44 to 45. I, I received this yesterday. And as the message was going on, it kept on confirming because I was waiting for another, another scripture. But this scripture, God kept on confirming it from the messages. Praise the Lord. The man of God said, we are in the lineage of Christ. And the Bible said in the book of Genesis that God created us in his own image. But along the line, Satan came and polluted us. So we are no longer in the image of Christ. Thank God for his mercy. He came down in the book of John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and God was the word. Verse 14, he came down, he put on human flesh to come and share his life and show us the way. So accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior has taken you back to the real lineage of God. You are now in God's heritage. You are now partaker of his kingdom. You are now seated in family places with him. You are now his brother. You are now his son. As men that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. This is our heritage. This is our promise. And for you to be able to pull down all the manipulations of the devil, as you, all those shackles, all those inherited nature, all those things that are struggling with the body, now, this is the prophetic declaration that you have the power to speak and address it and send it away. Now, what did the, what did the Bible say? It said, as soon as the hearing, now as a child, God, you have the power to say, as soon as they hear me, who? Strangers. Strangers that are hiding in your body. Strangers that are hiding in your house. Strangers that are hiding in those wears. There are strangers in this cloth we are putting on, if you don't know. Some clothes are demonized. They are from the bottomless pit to so initiate you secretly. If you don't have the eye of God, you can 
Some things are not meant for you to do. Some places are not meant for you to go. But because of the lustful nature, we don't hear God. But by the virtue of this program, the every edition, you have been set loose. Before I go on, if you are born again, quickly cry to Jesus. You need to be born again so that you can be a child of God, so that you can partake in this prophetic declaration, so that this prophetic declaration can be yours. He said, as soon as they hear me, they shall obey me. The spirit of, 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 of drug addict, they will obey you. The spirit of Pornography, they will obey you, provided you cry unto Jesus. Now I am speaking. I am joining, not, not me, not me now. I am speaking the word of God. I am joining my faith with the faith of my mothers, mommy Asikia, mommy Gloria, and our fathers. We are joining our faith and we are declaring to you now that the other strangers in your body, they will hear our voice and they will depart now. In the name of Jesus Christ, every spirit of, 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 of fornication, every spirit of addiction, whatever thing you are addicted to, you are addicted to games, you are addicted to partying, you are addicted to, 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 to all kinds. Hear the word of God that all those addiction, all those spirit of addiction, all those addiction of the devil. Hear the word of God now. Holy Ghost fire to destroy you and get you out of that body now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now your body is the temple of God. And as the temple of God, devil has no power to do it there. We are sending it out now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, let me continue. It says, the strangers shall submit unto me. The strangers shall submit unto you. The strangers are submitting now. They are fading out of your life now in the name of Jesus only go start to destroy them now in the name of Jesus Christ. You are now the lineage of God in the name of Jesus Christ. You are now in the image of your father, the almighty God. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because in that name, we have our power. And there's no other name that can, that can save us. That name save us. That name deliver us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we are commanding all those addictions, all those addictions, all those inherited curses and covenants that is manipulated to you that are run about you, we are detaching you from short in the name of Jesus Christ. For boy, we are Jogoba, for boy, we are and in the name of Jordan. In our common Jordan, now you are a child of God, you are the lineage of Christ. You are seated in heavenly places with you. You have no problem with sin again, you have no attachment with sin again. You are cut off from the sin. You are cut off from sinful nature. You are now a Christ nature. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Verse 45. The strangers will fade away and be afraid out of their closet. That closet or every part of your body that is attached to sin, that is attached to worldly pleasures. We are cutting it off now. You are set free in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Again, in the book of Colossians chapter 3, starting from verse 1. Now that you are born again, set your affection on things on high. We are praying now that henceforth you will hunger and thirst for righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will be filled as you are hungry and thirsty for righteousness. As you are studying the word of God, as you are listening to messages, you shall be filled. God will feed you. God will feed your soul. God will feed your spirit mind. And you will grow in the grace of God, in the power of God, in the mighty of God, in the anointing of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the Bible says, mortify therefore the members of your body. Receive grace to keep on mortifying your body. Receive grace to keep on eating the word of God so that you can grow and be like your father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, finally, the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God. That what? That we keep his commandments. This is the love of God that we keep his commandment. I pray the grace to keep the word of God will be upon you henceforth in the name of Jesus Christ. And you never go back to, to, to those life again in the name of Jesus Christ. When Paul had that experience, that experience remained permanent.
permanent. He never go back to strong life again. He became apostle Paul to the end. Now that you are born again, you are not a child of God has fought and you keep growing to the end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Devil has no portion in your life again. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are no longer his property because the blood of Jesus Christ is upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost has marked you for righteousness and righteousness shall be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Seeking the kingdom of God first and other things shall be added. Now that you have done so, Every every of your steps are guided, and we continue to be guided by the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. And his commandments are not grievous. If you surrender your life to Jesus, if you are following the word of God, just listen to the testimony of the, of, of, of the man of God. If you are walking with God, everything will look smooth as if you know how to it is not to it is God that is working it. God will walk this out of faith. To favor you, to favor you, and the glory of the Lord will radiate in your life, over your life. It will affect your family as well, it will affect your parents as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive grace to contend for that faith, that original faith that you have had. Receive faith, receive strength to contend for it, and you will stand to the end. In the name of Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, when Jesus shall come to take away his dwell, you and I will be counted worthy to make it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is preparing his own people. You will be prepared. God will prepare you by his word, by his fire, by his anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ. And to our mommy, mommy, you will not be tired. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are not told you not for it, for me, join in the name of Jesus Christ. Of calling my mother, Balas, in the name of Jesus Christ. The glory of the Lord that is upon you will continue. It will not go down. Only both are around about you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Am I Jamwa Kama? Am I Jamwa Mama? Am I Jamwa Yama? In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In my mind, you see as you are seeing us, you will be happy more and more. Your grandchildren, all your spiritual children, we will surround you. You will be glad in the name of Jesus Christ. God has raised you as a standard to help us, to encourage us, to motivate us. You will not go down, you know, for time, huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. You and that you continue to work stronger, even in your own age, you will not be tired. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, in fact, as I did say, you are not using glasses. You are looking fresh. You are looking beautiful. More of beauty of God upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will not wrinkle. You will not shackle. This is will, not, will not come upon your body because your body is the temple of God. So no disease is permitted to stay there, to dwell there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we return all the glory back unto you. Continue to anoint this message. Continue to anoint this program and spread it across the globe to help our youth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our children shall be taught of the Lord and grace shall be our peace. As you are spreading the word, as you are teaching them, as you are telling them about the will of God, they will hear, they will understand. In the name of Jesus Christ, we return all the glory back unto you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, the Lord, in your strength. That was powerful. Thank you so much. And everyone that has been delivered, they stand delivered totally. In Amen. The name. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much, man. The Lord bless you. We're glad to have you. God bless you. All right. Shortly Amen. before we take the closing prayer, our Father and the Lord is also in the house now. So we want to just announce that tomorrow, by God's grace, we will be starting online circuit course in church drama ministry, Batch Hate. And this is for all ministry, church, and campus drama group members. Everyone that has interest in drama ministry or you feel you sense a calling. Somebody was talking, was asking the other time that the Lord said you should be you should preach, you should witness to people you can come for this program. You would see, you will get or some revelations of several ways in which you can fulfill purpose in that line. So it's there, the link is there, and then it's already posted on the chat board too as well. So you can register for this course. It's 5,000, right? You can register for the course. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Also by God's grace, we shall be starting um, the, the 53rd basis as good course in Christian drama 
and this is for two weeks. This is a, is a physical course, and it's going to start on the 15th of May, 2021. And it's going to be for two weeks. It's a two weeks of intensive classwork and practical sessions for all fresh students who want to acquire academic and spiritual knowledge of Christian drama arts and film productions. So it's for two weeks and you, you, the application is still open. You can apply, the link is there. You can apply, you can screenshot it and then you can reach out to us later for any further details. So we shall be expecting you. Also, if you have come for uh, the basic, this the next level, this whole professional certificate course in Christian Drama Heart is also for two weeks and is a, is, a, is a step higher. It's only those who have taken the basic course that can come for this professional course. It's just for two weeks, and I know that you will be blessed. Also, if you have been at the Institute before right now, before now, and you have taken the, either you have taken the basic and you have also taken the professional course, either of the two, you are also welcome to join us in this regular Monzani alumni with the freshest course. It's just for one week, and it starts on the 20th, uh, on the second. Of, uh, of <laughs> in the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So, just one minute. Uh, praise God. Sorry about that. Hallelujah. Amen. So those are the courses that we will be running. And by God's grace, we welcome you to join us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I trust you've been blessed. And I would like to invite our daddy, Daddy Yemi Adepoju, for the closing benediction. After the closing benediction, we will be shouting our victory, hallelujah. So don't go away. Don't go away. The meeting is not over on the grace is shared. Before you hallelujah. Daddy, daddy about over to you. Before you Ma invite Daddy, I can right. talk about the program. They are, they are asking about the coming program. Program all right the okay um praise, praise the lord now this program is called the uh, the god single time out with mommy gloria and by god's grace this is the fourth edition and the next edition is going to be in may now this is what we want to tell you it is always on the last sunday of the month so in your calendar on your phone on your system on your right, devices yes block it out 5 p.m last sunday of the month last sunday of the month and the last sunday of the of next month is 30 30th of may 2021 so block it out that's when we have it it's fixed for the rest of the year it's what god is doing for us all singles this year so it's fixed for the rest of the year so please please and please mark it down book it down the flyer will still be out so once you see the flyer I want to employ you to follow uh, at Gloria Bamley on Facebook, as Gloria Bamley on Twitter, and at Gloria Bamley on uh, Instagram. Also follow our daddy at Mike Bamley on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And then follow on Zion Faith International on Facebook. Any of this, if you follow any of this, you get all the information. We want all the information about this program and several other programs that we have. There are several other programs that we have. We have for the married men. We have for, you can invite your daddy for that. You can have for married women. You can invite your mommy for that. And then for your sing, for the singles, we are here. Praise the Lord. So last Sunday of next month is another time that we'll be coming back to receive freshness from God. And between now and that time, I have no doubt in my spirit. We have no doubt in our spirit that you have moved Higher in intimacy with God. Hallelujah. She shall be with the time, my testimonies. Amen and amen. So um, with that, I want us to just welcome our daddy in the Lord, Evangelist Yemi Adipoju. Daddy, over to you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed Hallelujah. tonight? It's been very warm. It has been wonderful. I want us to give thanks to God and say, Lord, you have been so good. It's been time. We have been enlightened. We have been challenged. We have been the revelation of your word today. Let's appreciate God. Father, we are grateful for this edition. It's been mind-blowing. You've really spoken to us. you revealed to us who we are. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we are grateful to you. Thank God for the Zion singers. You blessed us. Thank God for the man of God. Thank God for the questions that have been answered. Thank God for our mommy in the Lord, mommy Gloria. Thank God for all the mothers in the house. 
Thank you, Jesus, for all these youth around the world. Thank you for the testimonies. Without you, we couldn't have done all this. Father, we turn all the glory of you. Accept our thanks. Accept our praises in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that every day as we leave this place, Lord, let us, recover, let us not recover from this experience in the name of Jesus. Help us, O oh Lord Jesus, to put your word. Help us, O oh Lord, to stay in the place of intimacy, a place of deep relationship with you, where we'll experience sanctification, where iron will sharpen that iron. Let it be our experience in the name of Jesus. As you go today, the presence of Jehovah will be with you in Jesus' name. The hand of the Lord will rest upon you. He will continue to shine in this crooked and perverse generation in the mighty name of Jesus. Go and overcome. Go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Continually be a light in the world in the name of Jesus. Go arise and begin to shine. I prophesy to your life, you are God's battle light and God's weapon of war. Through you, the Lord will break into pieces and nations in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Pray that as we go, that Lord, testimony shall abound. When we shall gather in May, it shall be with greater testimony. We shall Amen. be gathered in good health. None of us shall be blessed. None of us shall be in the hospital. Amen. There will be more people. There will be peace in the land. There will be peace in your home. There will be peace in your heart. It shall be well with your families, well with your parents, well with your finances, well with Amen. everything you do. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore in Amen. the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much, Daddy. God bless you. The Lord renew your strength and keep you steady in the name of Jesus. More grace, more unction. God bless you. We love you, sir. Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. Hallelujah. Are Amen. you ready? God's hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? Unmute yourself and shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much, Ma. God bless you. Thank you very much for everything. We appreciate it. Thank you. God bless you, ma. I thought that was very nice. Mommy Gloria, God bless you richly in Jesus' name. I'm really blessed with your drama ministry and everything since I've been watching it. May God uphold you more and more and your family in Jesus' mighty name. God bless them. We are really privileged since we have been privileged. I wish we had all when we were younger. God bless you. Yeah. I want to go to heaven. Oh, <laughs> 
Just stand in his holy place He that has clean hands and a pure heart The road is called up yonder Father, please let me make the number Let me see you, let me touch you Let me hold you, God Salvation, Salvation. Sanctification. Sanctification Consecration Is all Jesus will come The saints are many He'll be taking us home Oh, the joy to behold The wonder A place prepared By Jesus the firstborn And we'll finally get To sing hallelujah Life in the red To God I'll make Joy to behold the wonder, a place prepared by Jesus the firstborn. Beautiful day it would be 
To be playing my guitar with the angels and be leading heaven's choir. We'll be chanting hallelujah with the saints and the elders. Hosanna to the one who reigns on high. So while I wait, I'll play my part. I'll fast and pray. I'll preach the word till everyone around me hears the truth that Jesus is coming soon. So let the heavens prepare the grounds Cause this young boy has made a vow That when the trumpet sounds A billion souls will fly on my account